XM Sirius now. Is that what it's called? I don't even know what it's called. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure they got the new logo uh, waiting. It's going to be called the company we used to work for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get fired. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> We're holding out hope, Jimmy. You never know in this business. I don't want to get fired. We're holding out hope. That's all we got. That's go all to, we got. I want to get like, they go, hey, guys, you know, we're going to get rid of the old XM facility. It's a little costly, but we got a nice new place for you here a few blocks away. Mm hmm. Here's your new badges. Yeah. Oh, I would like that. Yeah. Oh, you, you would? Sure. Like going into that building? <laughs> I would. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, the new place. Hmm. We have roaches in our XM building now. There's roaches in that the That is true. Building. It's infested. I'm ready to get out of that building. There's cockroaches and water bugs. Mm hmm. Yeah. I can't enjoy it there anymore. The office is a oh. mess. How could you not enjoy it? We, uh, is the video of uh, Pat Duffy snorting Duh. the cockroach up yes. online yet? God, when you hear the three of them just popping through his sinuses. Did we link that to ONA Radio.com? We'll do it right now. Uh, it just hurts. The, the thought of it hurts. For yeah. the newbies uh, trying to figure out what this show's all about, ONA Radio.com is a fine little website. <sighs> well, we got one of our guys. He, uh, yeah, he snorted up a cockroach, and the noise was just amazing. I think it's also on YouTube, or no? Yeah. What is it under there, uh, young Sam? Uh, Roach Wars 2008. <laughs> Roach Wars Roach Wars. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, take a break, and uh, and we're going to regroup and start like doing our radio show. So, Oh, uh, for the texters out there, get ready. Get ready. Get ready to text. Oh. Get ready to text. That's all I... Oh, wait. Wow. I know this is radio, but this video is amazing. Roach Wars 2008 from Opie and Anthony on YouTube. <laughs> that is disgusting. Pat Duffy snorting up a cockroach. Right before the break, we were telling you about the big merger that went down between mm -hmm. the two satellite radio companies. And we're hearing there's going to be a bloodbath in Washington because Sirius has taken over XM. It's not yeah. a merger. So Sirius is pretty much going to use all their people and get rid of the XM people. That's a fact. Some of the XMers will survive. Yeah. Will we make the short list? I, I don't know. Because someone on Instant Feedback is like, will you just tell us already if you guys have a job? We don't know. We want to continue with uh, satellite radio. Absolutely. But the fact is we got 65 days left on our contracts and no one's talking yet. I mean, they got other things they had to worry about. So we're hoping now that the merger is official, then maybe they come and... and uh, Give us a little little phone call. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be scary though, because after all those heads come off, it's like they're gonna be coming up like in like butcher clothes, with, like the blood on the front, going, "Son, yeah. you guys ready to negotiate?" <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> next. <laughs> uh, I but go anywhere. but I hear the firings have begun, uh, Anthony. Really? We got some exclusive audio of that going. Oh, down. yes. Here's uh, one poor soul trying to save his job. What you do in Inatech is you take the specifications from the customers. And you bring them down to the software engineers. Yes, y yes, uh, that's that's right. Well, then I just have to ask, why couldn't the customers just take them directly to the to the software people, huh? Well, uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, because engineers are not good at dealing with customers. Uh -huh. So you physically take the specs from the customer. Well. No, my, my secretary does that, or the facts. Huh. So then you must physically bring them to the software people. Well, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes. Uh, what What would you say you do here? <laughs> well, look, I already told you. I deal with the goddamn customers so the engineers don't have to. I have people skills. I am good at dealing with people. Can't you understand that? What the hell is wrong with you people? <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely what goes on behind those closed doors. There's going to be a lot of those conversations going on in the next couple of days. Someone's just pretty much crying to keep their job. Yeah. But ah, I got people skills. You ever fight for a job? Um, no, when I got fired, it was for something that I couldn't defend. <laughs> it was always bad. <laughs> What was that? I, anything from, you know, when I was a kid, just barely scraping money together at a job. Mm -hmm. It was always something bad. I was, you know, pilfering or uh, <laughs> late all the time, habitually late, absent, things like that. 
you know, taking extensive lunch breaks, leaving half a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I sucked. I was a very bad employee. <laughs> you ever fight for a job there, Jimmy? Believe it or not, I was, I've was i only been fired once, and I was five years sober when it happened. Ooh. Lay a coast lamps. Well, Lake Coast Lighting, they were farm-based, really high in lighting. <laughs> I was lighting. doing, um... Would you like to buy a lamp? Yes. yes. Is your room too dark? Can you not read past 6.30 p.m.? <laughs> <laughs> Ted's Lamps. Yes, Ted's Lamp Service. We come over, we'll plug it right in for you. <laughs> um, uh, what, they, what was your job at this lighting company? I, I worked for uh, Christoph Silver, which was a very high-end silverware place. We worked in Raritan Center in Edison, and it was a, a major, the, the shipping hub. So all the shipping, the orders came through us and went out through us. And then Christoph moved back to New York City and Leia Coast Lamps moved right into the warehouse. So I just kind of stayed and they hired me. Well, what would you say you did there? Um, <laughs> what well, was your job? I mean, I would, I would put the labels on the boxes and make mm. sure that the tape wasn't coming up. Because, boy, the tape comes off. All of a sudden, you got a lamp lost. Ah, uh, true. But that truck backed in and I was right there an hour later at least. <laughs> Unloading it. an hour later. Oh, I was horrendous, and uh, they finally fired me. And I, I'd never been fired before. Wow. I knew I was in trouble though, because as the shipping order came in, they brought in this Italian guy who spoke Italian and worked his ass off. And like, well, he's just kind of here to help you. Oh. oh, okay, that's cool. Just help. Good. I now I could do less work. Oh, oh, wait a minute, I'm fired. And I collected unemployment for two years and did stand up. Ah, see, that's that how you got into my it. career. Good so, for you. Yeah, it was the best move ever could have happened to me. Very good. I had a, I had a, uh, lemonade. I had a boss once. Uh, I was I was habitually late, just late all the time. And I guess he had had it at some point. And he, he had talked to me so many times about it, and I just couldn't. I couldn't get up. I was very tired, very sleepy, and uh, it was a job I hated. So you know, I can get up for this because I enjoyed doing this, but um, I hated this job. So I was never on time. And um, he came in one day and he goes, uh, "Why don't you just punch out and go home?" And uh, I was like, "Oh." Because I'm late? He goes, yeah. I go, okay. And I assumed he just wanted me to go home that day. You're, so thinking, I, you're thinking beach day. I took it as a kid. day off. Like, right. cool, I got a day off. But apparently, he never wanted me to come <laughs> back. <laughs> Wasn't that your uncle? No, he he did, did that, too. That seems to be the way I get fired. You, you had that happen twice? Because yep. as you're saying this, I'm like, well, Ants told this story, and it was his uncle that told him not to come, <clears throat> come to work. Yeah, it was that, and then it was at a True Mechanical. And I was... Uh, Working in the shop there, making duct work. And, the, yeah, he told me, uh, just leave, go home. Oh, day off. <laughs> Rock. Oh, wait, I'm done, I'm fired. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Do you know I worked for Krausers? Like, I, I was the night guy at the... Krausers? You know what is? It's like, um, it's a little convenience store. And uh, it was in the Brunswick Shopping Center in North Brunswick. And uh, I would close up at, like, 11 p.m. And we had, like, a little deli area with meats and stuff. Where I'd make sandwiches. And I noticed that there were little teeth prints Uh-oh. in all of the cheeses and the meats. Oh, boy. And little little black hash droppings. So apparently the mice had been coming in and eating and dropping little mouse duties. And uh, there was just, it was infested. It was covered with uh-huh. mouse bites and mouse duty. So I remember I talked to the district manager. I'm like, I can't sell this. This is gross. And he's like, that's ah, all right. Just fine. You can sell it. Oh. He, he, saw, he saw the teeth prints. And he goes, oh, you can sell it. So he told me just to cut around the teeth prints ah. and throw out the stuff that had been bitten into. Well, at least he uh, said that. And um, I actually took a stand. I was like Norma Ray. I refused to sell mm. the meat with feces in it. Sure, that worked out well for you. I wound up just quitting. I think I just yeah. didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, mm. gave him my keys. <laughs> Good story, Jim. You got to think the little. M- I liked it. Yeah, that's great. Should be so thirteen episodes. Should be built around it. <laughs> the guy who wouldn't sell mouse duty on the cheese. <laughs> I think his little <laughs> mice feet were just stomping around the meat as he's uh, taking bites. Oh, dragging those giant gonads that they have across <laughs> across the cheese. <laughs> Ugh. It was really awful. I was just stealing cigarettes in my stupid light blue Kango. Oh, what a <laughs> dork. A punchable white nerd. <laughs> Stupid cracker. <laughs> oh, where's the press conference that uh, the show got mentioned in? Or the press uh, release? Oh, really? That one we're not mentioned in? I don't think any talent is. Oh, okay. This is just a no, thing on Google Alert. for all employees. On Google oh, yeah. Alerts, because uh, the merger went through, they're they're mentioning some of the fine program programs that XM and Sirius have, and we're mentioning that. So that was good. I got a little uh, Google Alert today. Okay. Hey, we could do the... Uh, the Accidental Husband trailer, another chick flick trailer. Oh, which one is it called? 
Uh, Sorry, I was just reading a part of uh, Mel's statement where it's like uh, the past few months, uh, um, it's uh, because of uh, the hard work that went into this, that we're here today, and then this is the ominous. While there is still work to be done, I'm excited about the prospects for Sirius XM because uh, you know what that work is, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. The it's old sharpening of the machete. The old samurai sword. I will predict the bloodbath uh, starts today. Really? And ends tomorrow or Thursday. Well, no, there's a scary... There, it's very obvious. I mean, people think uh, we have inside info because we went on the air yesterday and said uh, a lot of people are going to be fired from XM Satellite Radio. No, uh -huh. it, we've been through this a few times in our careers when one company takes over another company, which is what happened here. They're calling it a merger, but basically Sirius uh, bought XM or, or mm. whatever. I don't even know if you should use the word bought. Uh, it, it's, it's a known thing. You want to put, put your own people in there for the most part. Yeah. This there's is, talented people that are at XM that should stay and will stay, but in general, there's going to be a lot of people fired. Mm -hmm. That's just how it works. This is a scary statement. Yeah. Because you know what it means. We will work quickly and diligently to integrate our teams. <laughs> oh boy that's bad news for some that's, people yeah it sounds nice when you read it at first till you a delve name. a little deep it's like hey that's good yeah we're gonna work close <laughs> yeah we're close to Oof. get the teams together and then of course the one anthony pointed out yes while there is still work to be done <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah we're living in some strange times as far as uh, radio goes, strange, strange, strange. We got 64 days left on our contract. Contracts. Well, and, and we're hoping to continue, obviously. That's obvious. Of course. But I do want to acknowledge we got 64 days and counting. Hoping for a phone call. Yeah. Any day now would be nice. You don't want one today, though. No. <laughs> no. Let's be honest. Today's not a good day for the phone calls. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it. Mel's people are listening uh, these days. We don't want a phone call today or tomorrow. Thursday or Friday would be nice. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, you made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I, feel, I feel like we're like in Full Metal Jacket when they're all sitting in the circle to see what happens. Oh, 300, infantry, you made it. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of uh, ominous, too. As we operate more efficiently, we will be able to innovate in new ways. Uh, and then, uh, first and foremost, we'll be, quote, best of both which is uh, an appropriate theme for this merger and upcoming transition. Oh, no. The best of both. That means best of both. a lot of serious with a sprinkle of XM. That's, so what happened to... If it was a recipe, that's what it would be. What happens to the mediocre? <laughs> the best of both will survive. And it even says here, as we continue to operate without Opie and Anthony... We will be able to... Hey. Hey. But hey. 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 Well, wouldn't that raise a red mm. flag? I didn't read that. That would raise a red flag. They're, they're keeping that huge facility down there in Washington. I imagine that there are going to be so many parking spaces available that they're they're going to put in a volleyball court or something. <laughs> you think that's it? <laughs> yeah, they're going to just... They're just going to make a lawn mm. where the parking spaces used to be. Do you think they're keeping that because of the rent being lower than New York or because all the XM equipment is there? Yes. They have to. Well, the equipment, yeah. They can just yes. pack it in a truck. They should throw it out to a Beverly. truck. Lee. Bring it up here. Put it in uh, Jersey City. <laughs> just set up the dishes and all those studios and all. Oh, my God. Logistically, I don't know how the hell they're going to do this. Yeah, because XM, how is XM going to be on the air if they're like moving the whole thing? Yeah. yeah. Can they lift the whole building? Well, how are they going to carry it? Where are they going to put it? What about traffic? You know, how I'm about a bridge? How do you drive it under a bridge? Or over one. Or over one. I'm not going to believe uh, that this merger uh, is real. No? Until I see Artie Lang passed out near a vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll buy it. Then I'll buy it, yes. Here we are at XM Sirius Radio. Huh? Sirius XM. That's oh, Sirius, Sirius XM. XM. <laughs> I don't know. That's what they call it. Sirius XM Radio. Uh, it's the Opie and Anthony Show. We are live. It's, uh, I don't know, like July 30th to prove it. Uh, we got Mel Carmisen coming in in about uh, five or ten minutes. 
Rich, when you see a guy with uh, like white hair and dark eyebrows, that's your cue to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta look like we're smart today. Oh please, I'm gonna put on my real smart fucking face today. Yeah, you are mm -hmm. outside yeah, the studio. It's a mask of someone else's face. Yeah, yeah please. Outside the studio. I'm not even kidding. Really? Yeah, I you're going to dumb this down. We got we got no, to get into some things with Mel Karmazin. We got to see if we're going to be part of the new company. We, we got things to do. What if he recognizes me or He's knows not going to recognize you. He might be a fan you. of mine. You don't know that. He's not a fan of yours. Why How do you ask him when he gets you. here? You Marshall Simmons didn't know you. you Why did would he show. know you? He yeah. might know him. A lot of people watch TV. Mm. I've been on a lot of TV. He would recognize you if you were a big wig down on Wall Street. He knows those guys. He doesn't see, like, faces when it comes to celebrities. He ran Viacom. What's that? Exactly. He's a company. Okay. <laughs> What's that? Dunce. <laughs> you dunce. Uh, and the place oh. smells good. It looks good. Donnie yeah, Wicklin. they swab the deck? Donnie Wicklin's up here in a suit, and uh, oh. and Master Poe's up here in a suit. Trying to keep their job. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised Poe makes him fill out paperwork. I was just thinking that. Ah, uh, sir, yes. fill out your paperwork, yes. and then take a seat on the bleachers. Yes. We uh, cleaned up the cockroaches. Uh, the place looks very good. I know the guys worked hard on it. Wow, look at the sign out there, huh? Serious XM. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Man. Who thought we'd ever Did see the day? Deal go through? Exactly. Hold, Do you understand hold, what's happening hold here? On. Did the deal go through? I mean, is it? Is we understand it, what you mean. Is, is Look at the sign. Did they close? That's what I'm saying. No, no, they didn't. Did. We're traders. We're actually uh, <laughs> we're, we're secretly shipping tapes to Sirius. Yeah. They're two separate companies. What are you? Well, I thought it was going to take months. It took eighteen months. <laughs> it took it took like a, a year and a half. Rich, what? really? This is no, why. I'm serious. I, oh I know you're serious. God. I was reading. I and was this reading. is Sirius XM Radio, so you're in the right place. As of right now, right now. Yeah. So, yeah as of yesterday, the day before, the, the, oh, this is right the second the, the, the deal went through. Yes, they have signed the paperwork. Can it someone let through. us know? Wow. Can, I, can someone let us know when, when say that a certain boss is on the elevator? So we can make empty a certain seat. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want it. Uh, I want it to be done violently. <laughs> okay. If you could uh, humor me with that, Mars. Okay. Wow. You have to leave. I will. I'll, maybe for a few, I'll go. Yeah, out. you're just too. Um, what? <laughs> stupid. <laughs> To uh, be in the same room. No, but here's the thing, Rich. We love you, but you'll make some kind of a joke. You'll say you'll say something that makes us go. He, we really don't like him that much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to defend ourselves. Exactly. Where I go, that happens. Exactly. That's why we didn't have an audience here. We're we're exactly. trying to we're trying to just, play this one right. It's no a, audience, no dummies. Just me, well, how long do you think Anthony, he's be here? He's and Jim be here Norton. The whole time is he? He'll, he'll, he'll probably he, do uh, <laughs> an awkward ten minutes and get the fuck out. Look, and I'll come back in. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Go, hey guys, I'm going to leave now. I have something to Look, do. Look, we don't care what you do before or after. Yeah, we're not it's concerned with your plans. It's the during part. Yeah. You know, when he's in here, you can't really be in here. Yeah. You didn't even know if the deal went through. You didn't I know what Viacom did. was. I, yeah, I this did. is this is one for the adults, Rich. <laughs> Listen, I'm serious. When it comes to this kind of shit, <laughs> I'm good at it. You're not good oh, at it. Are you? Am spraying? Getting out? <laughs> Let's hope so. When it comes yeah. to meetings and big wigs. Yeah. How many I'm times really have you been told to leave or just quiet? Has Bonnie told no, you that at pitch first, meetings? Like, my first you wife, just shut up. You just don't talk. The last pitch meeting we had last week, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, yeah. Rich. So, and I'm good Glad at to hear it. what I'm saying. What I'm saying is because... Oh, as Cream Pie adult, Jones has to go, too. Like, Hide I mean, Cream Pie Jones. He can yeah. walk around. No, no. He, can't, he shouldn't be seen. No. He shouldn't be seen. Uh-uh. See, well, I'm going to tell you why people like you guys. Why don't we line good? up everybody and decide if they should stay or go? <laughs> it's Rich a good idea. is so out. Rich cream is done. Jones. And I'm Danny's got a hat on. Danny's hiding in. the crazy hair, so you're good. Danny's look, look in. We might have to tell Sam to go. Look at Sam. Although, Sam's got his hair's wacky. Although Mel does like uh, hiring minorities because he's got quotas to fill. So <laughs> you stay. You stick around there, Sam. Okay. You're good. Mars, I think, should leave. Yeah, me too. You're not taking it. Where's the <laughs> nice shirt today? Look at look at what Poe's wearing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? This is this is. I've learned this in my career many times. Career. You guys, <laughs> you guys are where you're at because of who you are. You can't switch up. You you can't 
Yeah, we're like, not do switching you, do you up. Understand? We're the same people. We just took a shower today. Yeah. That's all we're doing. He thinks we're say, he's saying is don't sell out because the boss is here. Right. That, that, that's what we have to deal with. I want to spill hot coffee all over your it's little not balls. That hot. Oh. That's what I'm mad about. Okay. And uh, Mars has to be here because what if something breaks? Who, who else will come in and not fix it? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> hey, uh, before Mel gets here, I do want to say one thing. Um, Bubba, the love sponge, yeah. huh. is uh, calling us deal breakers. He basically said that if O and A is part of the new company, yeah. that that is the deciding factor for for him to, I guess, leave satellite radio. Mm, whatever. <laughs> I think fun. Bubba's get. I think Bubba has a footprint in his ass, and he needs an excuse, like he's leaving on his own. A lot of people are saying, yeah, like, that. of course, he's he's making up his own excuse because maybe the future isn't bright for uh, Bubba and satellite radio. Because I could give a crap who works for the company. Who cares? It doesn't matter to me. I've worked for plenty of places where I've liked and didn't like some of the people that work there. What are you going to do? So, deal, bro, I refuse to work here if... You don't even like the people really? you do the show with. Uh, and, that's not, and that's not a, a deal breaker. <laughs> a deal breaker. Yeah, he right. said... What, what was the quote? It's on New York Radio Message Board. It's a, it's a deal breaker to him. <laughs> yeah. Shut the Nothing fuck up. He's as dumb as they come. He At least he talks in his... Stupid. At least he talks in his real voice. Wow, I lie. It's a deal breaker. Wow, wow, wow. He really is horrible. <laughs> He's the worst. I'm beat it. Like the Tampa fat boy. Wow, wow, wow. Like he thought there was going to be outrage. Like, okay, okay, Bubba. Okay, okay. We'll talk this out. Okay. Don't you have to have Shut some up. kind of a deal or, or power of negotiation to have a deal breaker? Like, you can't walk in if no one really cares and goes, hey, that's a deal breaker. Because then they'll just go, okay. Broken. <laughs> yeah, it's like somebody that's just like the greeter at a Walmart walking up going, sure. you know, I want this, and if you don't give it to me, it's a deal breaker. That's right. Either Some... Frank gets fired from receiving or I quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like, they just go, okay, leave. Who cares? Yeah, no one go. Don't, you guys don't want... even announce it. Just leave. People yeah. will notice. You guys want to, take a, you want to take a quick break, get some leaks in and all that stuff, and uh, get Rich out of here? Uh... Want, me to, want me to carry this until you get back, and then I'll leave? Carry it. Yeah, carry it. No, no, I'll, I'll be right not, back. No, no, no one's going, going anywhere. Fuck it. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not saying anything. Don't say anything. I'm not bailing him what out. What do you mean? Don't say anything. I just got to take a leak. Yeah, we're not oh, okay. Well, you know, today is a very important day. After the merger, there's you know some big wigs come in. So we big if we do take calls, now I have to talk. No, I don't want to do, screw things up for me. If we do take some calls, uh, you know, some intelligent ones today, keep the uh, cursing to a minimum. You know. And we'll get back to normal in about a half an hour. Who's going to take calls saying, while Do you think we would studio? take a call? Oh, well, we're probably not going to take You're calls. Insane. But what I'm saying is, yeah, so now's your time to, uh, you know, go get some breakfast, do whatever, and uh, call in later. With the audience? We want the audience to listen. Oh. You're encouraging the audience to go get breakfast? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're not helping. You are we really. We don't want any listeners during this? An abomination. Right, let me start over. Let me start over. Uh, are we on the air? Of course we are. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm going to... Uh, Sunnyvale, Sunnyvale next week in uh, okay. California. Rooster Teeth Feathers, so stop by. Hey, here's Rooster the... Teeth Feathers? Yeah, it's a club. It's a nice little club. You're it's performing at a place called Rooster Teeth oh, Feathers? Oh, really? All of a sudden, your comedy club names uh, are, are, are original or, or not uh, crazy or... A name, you know, big deal. They're all... Whatever. Oh, my God. Is he just <laughs> babbling? We should make him do the Mel interview. We should all sit silently and make him... Oh God! It would almost be worth getting dumped for, <laughs> yeah. just to watch the shame yeah. that he feels. The I dummy no talking to a powerful that person. That dummy. No what do you mean powerful? Powerful. Th this Shut just, your mouth. Money doesn't make Shut you powerful. Your, oh, you're the Being worst. a good person makes you. What powerful. did I miss? No, I have no idea yes, what you're yeah, even what's what's talking power? about. No, we're, listening, we're listening to Voss recite the lyrics from a Huey Lewis song. <laughs> The p being a nice person doesn't make or, you powerful. Yes, it does. No, it, or up, being, it does doing not. the right thing in life makes you powerful. What? That makes you powerful. Doing the right thing. Does it really? Life. Affirmations yes. in the mirror? No, oh, it doesn't. Really? Yeah, it does. I am powerful. Yeah. Just because you're powerful, does it, 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 at the end. <laughs> so really, so it matters <laughs> if Reagan only... was a nice guy. <laughs> What's Ra that? It matters if Reagan was a nice guy. No, he was a, a powerful person? guy. Exactly. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is, power is from within. It, what makes you feel powerful? I hope this you're thinking that as your car slams into an abutment. <laughs> <laughs> as, as you go through the windshield and your little feet. That's like, really. Do you think that's a nice per thing to wish on a person? No. Okay. It's not. You I have my mother on her honeymoon. My mother and father. If it, luckily, I'm here because on their honeymoon. That explains they went, it. 
luck, on mm-hmm. their honeymoon, they went through over an embankment down. Both of them went through the wheel windshield. If a tree didn't stop the car, they would have went through the windshield and into the water. Wait, so you got brain damage before you were born? Mm. That's what happened. No, I'm yeah. just in the stomach. They were both on the their drive honey- shaft. Both on their honeymoon. In the stomach. Six-year-old. Bloody on the wind- on the, uh, windshield on their honeymoon. That's why their marriage didn't work out. <clears throat> How yeah. about that? I saw See? something like that coming. You think that's why the marriage didn't work out? Or maybe the, the disappointment bringing home D's... <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't handle anyone. They blamed yeah. each other for you. They're like it's a little Richie Voss I, I coming home. I tried to teach him. He, with another crappy report card. That was always their favorite. Yeah. How many were there? Three. Me, my <laughs> brother, and my sister. Yeah, the ones. The, the brother and sister are probably doing well. So they would say to Rich, "Like you're, yeah. you're our favorite." <laughs> 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 they were just appeasing you. Meanwhile, yeah, mm, they you hated the really. of you. You weren't really the favorite. Should we? Uh, what, what's the deal, Steve? Steve, we got lookouts. So I can get up. Plenty of them. So what do we got? We got, he's walking up from 30 Rock right now, so we're going to get a, we'll get a heads up when he's up the, or down the block. He's walking all the way here from 30 Rock? <clears throat> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's, that's a whole three blocks, Rick. <laughs> See, if you know Mel Rich. also, Mel walks a lot in New York three. City when it's nice out. Yeah. He's always walked uh, around. Used to see him walking from uh, the NEW building over to Black Rock. Back in the old days of CBS. We used to say hi to him, and he would just be annoyed that we were saying hi to him. Well, <laughs> he well, just was always annoyed. Look, what comics would you let stay here? Like, would, would you let Bobby stay here? No. No, no. no what no. about Patrice? Oh, no. No, 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 not no. Patrice. Patrice? No. Patrice is the worst. Mel! No. Okay. Mel. Colin, you'd let stay Why do white people? No, he wouldn't. Colin, you Colin, what do you mean? He's, he's no. intelligent. Mm, yes, you understand no. how Colin... Colin will just say awful shit. Colin's yeah. intelligent. Colin's but too bitter. Yeah. I don't to see a successful, yeah, a move, way, powerful yeah. businessman, he would have to mouth off to him. Yeah. Col- I, don't, I don't think he's bitter. I think Colin's... We know you don't. There's not one me. comic yeah. that I would want in this room. Not one out of the crew? No. Nope. What about Nick? Nick would be good. No. 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 Nick wouldn't be good. Why don't you leave? Now, can he, do, do we got, he's probably only a couple, give me time. To do what? I'm going to leave. I'm, Why don't you I, go I, downstairs don't want... and be a lookout? And yeah. You could phone us when he comes That's in. Right. <laughs> you just be the lookout guy. That's right. This is great. That's an important position. Finally, yeah. It's been like seven years since I've been coming here, and I'm finally getting kicked out. No one's kicking you out. You know, I, just, I should be. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want the pressure of sitting here when he's in it's, here. It's not kicked because, out. It was just the thing was. That when when this came down, yeah, I don't blame. Uh, hey, listen, no everyone is saying, here. "Rich, get the fuck out." Now, Everybody Rich, on instant feedback. <coughs> they are, they are only allowing yeah. me to stay out of a sense of loyalty. <laughs> really? Yes, of course. Yeah, Danny Mel, is here. Mel is an in, extremely intimidating. Extremely. Not a, not if you have nothing to lose, like me. No, I'm yeah. telling you. You have a wife and son. three kids. What do you mean you have nothing to lose? You have everything to lose. lose. I'm a like rebel. I'm, exactly. You think, you're not Jimmy Dean. Yeah. You're an older gentleman. You have who things Nicorette. to lose. <laughs> yes, exactly. You have two families. <laughs> Cold Jimmy, coffee. You suck. <laughs> Jimmy, someone's saying that you sound nervous. Are you nervous? <laughs> no. I'm, I'm just pointing out yeah, what's absolutely. going on. No, I actually feel, okay. uh, I feel fine. All right. You know what? I Maybe I'll... Uh, I'm going to scram now. Just maybe I'll go do some commercials yeah. or something. And oh, you know how we do the commercials here for my gigs and stuff. Are yeah. you still talking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go on, you go. go hey, do you really have sh- uh, season five of The Wire? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, swear I to have God. all of them. Not five. It hasn't come out yet. No, I swear. Why to God. would I say all of them? Would he say not five? You have not five, five though. Well, because five hasn't been released yet. But yeah, we got Roland that you know gets this stuff for us, so we're prepared for interviews. Yeah. He's All in right. the elevator? All right, get out of here. Yeah. Oh, my Look God. at Rich. Rich, leave. Just leave. Right. Remember, yeah, this is light there. and airy. It's a how do you do. Not, <laughs> an, inqu- <laughs> not an inquisition. <laughs> Look at Anthony. Uh, He's the one that's nervous. Light and <laughs> airy. Look, Eric Logan, he gave me a speech yesterday. He goes, could you please be Greg Hughes and not Opie? Exactly. And look. Eric Logan, uh, don't F it up. They're coming in like crazy. Another one from Logan. Tell Rich to get the fuck out. Yeah. Yeah, we had to this tell This is a pretty big uh, thing here. Where do you want to No, over there. Over there. <laughs> no, I'm sitting next nope. to you. Don't screw with me. <laughs> right then there. you better remove that chair because I'm going to have him take a seat right there. Oh, that's the good spot right there. You got it. That's not good. That means he's close to me. Yep. I want him to be nah, close but over you like, there. That's no. a better seat because that's where you're kind of looking over the whole thing. Oh, is it good? Yeah, I think so. All right, then, uh, Ant, switch seats for me. Nope. Please? <laughs> I'm staying right here. I'm right here. I think it's very funny that the instant feedbackers were even turning on Voss. 
Just get oh him yeah, out. everybody. Get him out. This is the worst. You don't want him around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guys, kryptonite. What is Mel's success? Kryptonite. What's Mel's opening line going to be? Hello. Yeah. Nah, he's. Hey, he's Eric Logan just Elo just uh, sent me a text too. Get tell Voss to get out. Yeah, everyone's saying it. Where did Rich go? Right there. No, no, Rich, hide. <laughs> oh, Rich, get out of here, no, let him please, look through the Rich. Window. Let him look through the window. I don't mind if Rich <laughs> looks through the window. Yeah. God, Rich. Watch can stare through the window, but he can't oh, no, speak. He's too creepy looking anyway, yeah. Rich. We'll just tell him he's a listener. Rich is a... Rich is like a hyena. Oh, no, he's Rich is shaking hands with him. Yeah. They kicked me out. He was hoping Mel would go, wait, I know you. Yeah. Wait, what? haven't I seen you on something? What's no, that? he doesn't know you. Please. There he is. <laughs> it's Mel Carmazin. Mel. Mel, have a seat. How are you, Jim? Jim, nice to see you. Hi. Anthony, how are you? Sir? I didn't know that. Hey, Mel, how are you? Who's this other person? Greg Hughes, Greg Hughes. we like to call him. It's Greg Hughes today. We don't like the Opie, we don't like the Opie character uh, much, so Greg Hughes today, I think, yes, is uh, more good. fitting. And did you purposely give me a chair that's down so low? <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't Mel's chair up higher? No, if that was the strategy, I understand, and I'm happy to deal with it. <laughs> and also headsets that don't sort of fit. My Instantly. Head. So um, Why is this not? I, I assume the company you work for has not given you the resources. That well, you need. No. Mel, that's something <laughs> I'd like to talk to you about. Yes, that, they've yeah. they've been. Uh, we call them skin flints. Is that the point? They've okay. been a little stingy. We have okay. a cockroach problem in this uh, building. Um, a major cockroach problem. And it was before you guys got there? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, or, but, or, or, perhaps a couple of... Is that, of, uh, is that a new it's, problem? It's or is been that multiplying for the last, uh, I don't know, It could be years. the material that comes out of the speaker. Sure. <laughs> Mel, you trimmed down since the last time we saw you. Uh, I've been on a hunger strike uh, the, trying it, to get the deal done. Yeah. So, uh, I knew that uh, making good arguments to the regulators didn't work, so mm -hmm. I tried anything. I thought they'd be sympathetic if they knew that there was a poor guy who's getting, you know, uh, IV feeding, you know, yeah. in a cell, you know, but uh, at the, th the end of the day, did, they, they did the right thing. Did you think it was going to take this long, uh, honestly? Well, a couple questions on that. One is, um, did I think it would get done, and I believed it should get done, but throughout mm -hmm. the whole process, I really questioned whether it will get done. I mean, yeah, I think everybody was. And it, there were uh, legitimate reasons for concern based on a lot of the stuff, you know, that you read. Um, did I think it would take this long? Absolutely not. Because, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, I mean, maybe I'm making it simplistic. I mean, it's okay. You got two satellite radio companies. Either you believe that they compete with a whole lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And if they do, no big deal. Okay. And if you think that there's a separate market, you know, called satellite radio and oh my God, having only one company in satellite radio is bad, then you should be able to conclude that in a rather short period of time. Yeah. It shouldn't have taken uh, so long. I think you proved a good point too, by saying, uh, and pointing out early on that it does compete with everything else, with all this other medium out there. And I think now it's more obvious than it was even uh, uh, when we tried to get this thing started. Uh, but it's it's a little more obvious now. But back then it was kind of hard to sell them on the fact that, yes, this is competing with iPods and iPhones and, and everything else. Well, you said when we got this thing going. You were well, in, I say we. cahoots with That's Mel what I'm, tra I'm it trying was, to... It was yeah, you and Mel I'm, getting this thing done. Late night phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been getting, uh, you know, obviously emails uh, every time uh, my name gets mentioned on the show. So yeah. I'm assuming everything that you guys have done has been done to help get this merger. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, Mel, of been course. Part, you guys have been part of the team. <laughs> yes, we're Mel, getting... I'll you. be honest with you, Mel. It's more what we didn't say than what we did say to get this merger through, to tell you Well, the boy, truth. that's pretty tough, because I heard some of the things that you said, and I didn't think there was anything left that wasn't said we're, but but let me get to your point and and <laughs> one of the things that i was um hopeful of yeah. and uh i even told our board um 17 months ago that uh this would be very important was that we needed the broadcasters to be very aggressive in opposing mm -hmm. the merger now and they were the nab yeah thank god because if in fact their strategy were smarter and the nab didn't try to oppose it that we had the benefit now of all of these people saying stop the monopoly stop the monopoly and the smart people in washington are saying well 
gee, if this is a monopoly, why do you care? Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, the fact that you care and the fact that you've spent so much money and the fact that, um, you know, terrestrial radio broadcasters have lobbied so hard proves that we're in a competitive market that would at least include the 10,000 AM FM radio stations. So Mm -hmm. add to that the technology changes that continue to go on, you know, I mean, internet radio, uh, you know, iPhones, uh, you know, whatever is out there, and there'll be more. So the fact that this merger occurred is great news, but there's still a tremendous amount of competitors out there yeah. that we compete with. Sure. No, you, were, you, were, uh, you were on the other side of it for, for a short time, too, when, when satellite radio started taking hold on regular radio. and Tried to kill how, it. Tried yeah, to kill it. You absolutely. I remember the ads that would run, and, and uh, it was it was all about bashing it and trying to... So you obviously had great insight on what a threat it, 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 it was. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't see any good reason why satellite radio was necessary coming from a very, very successful, one of the largest, if not the largest, mm-hmm. terrestrial radio company. There was nothing in it for me with satellite radio. Right. Um, all I knew is that when you got into your car, you had an AM and an FM button. The last thing I wanted you to have was an XM button. Another that was button, the right. last <laughs> thing I wanted. The worst nightmare came when uh, satellite radio not just came together, but really started to grow. And the broadcasters, uh, in not liking competition, you know, talk about people who want a monopoly, mm-hmm. not wanting competition, uh, did everything they could do to make us fail. I mean, their goal was not to just stop the merger. Right. The reason they wanted to stop the merger, if you think about it, I mean, you know, why would stop the merger matter? There'd still be satellite radio, there'd still be XM, there'd still be Sirius. The reason they wanted to stop it is they believed stand alone, we would be weaker, maybe fail. Now, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I've spoken to the management of XM throughout this process, and uh, they believed that XM would not fail. I mean, I, I you know, I, I mean, I didn't run the company, didn't know enough about it. I can assure you, CB, you never assure anybody of anything, but I can tell you, I strongly believe there was no risks associated with Sirius not making it. Right, you'd but, still be going yeah, murder or not. I mean, not. it may take right. a year or two more to make a profit. I mm-hmm. mean, at some point, you've got to make a profit, right? But the fact is that the broadcaster's hope was not just that the merger wouldn't happen, okay? That would be a step in the right direction, but satellite radio would disappear. Yeah, go away. These same broadcasters were the ones that fight fought against cable television. So when, you know, it was just the broadcast networks and stuff like that, and cable was coming in, the NAB lobbied against cable. They lobbied against satellite television. So that's what they do. And, and that's, Yeah. I never got the idea of how they could comp- say that it, it's not competing, that uh, it's a monopoly if the companies merge, but hey, we're not competing with them. Yet, we are trying everything in our power to keep them down and destroy them. And One of the things they did, which I can't tell you how much influence it had, because I really don't know, because it really got down to the very end, and it's two to two, and is this thing going to mm-hmm. happen and stuff. They put a banner on their building. They have, this, you know, very, they have a lot of money, right? All the broadcasters you know, put the money to them. And they had a banner on their building that said, Stop the Monopoly, Okay. <laughs> And we took pictures of it, right? And we sent it to everybody who uh, was on our list because our viewpoint was the fact that they're doing it. I mean, you know, th- I mean, they're not lobbying every merger that goes on. Mm-hmm. Well, why the hell yeah, should why would they, they care? care? Yeah. Why yeah. should if we are a duopoly on our way to a monopoly? By definition, they're not in that pie. Right. And the fact that they uh, thank goodness for it, you know, and I hats off to the head of the NAB. Uh, I think that uh, <laughs> David we, Rear. I think we all owe him a. But, you know, when I when when, when Saturday, when I finally get to celebrate on this merger, I will be toasting him first before I toast anyone Basically else. what Mel's doing right now. He's rubbing it in. He's <laughs> yeah. Why not? How happy are you? And why Mel? not? If I knew he was listening, I would be doing more but sure. I, I'm, I'm just assuming i'm just telling you the guys the word's straight. gonna get out there and you're yeah, rubbing I'm it just giving was, there a mo- yeah. was there a most frustrating thing like that happened because like for a while they were like yeah it's gonna go through it could be any day it could be any day it could be any week and then it wouldn't happen was there one thing that happened during this whole process where you were like this is a major problem now i well yeah uh, uh, i thought this was a major problem every step of the <laughs> way because they made it a major problem but i never was the one saying it's going to be any day so it was the press it was different people saying it so i sort of knew what was going on And I never knew, and it wasn't going to be over until it was over. So um, on Friday of last week, 
we got word that um, the third commissioner, at that point it was two to two, and we got word that the third commissioner had voted for the merger. But I still had not gotten the official notice that said the FCC had approved it. Mm -hmm. We didn't, so I wasn't even celebrating at that point. So it wasn't until we got the final word, which was about four o'clock on Monday, and then we uh, had to finish raising a bunch of money that we needed because, um, I don't want to get complicated, but XM had a, a, a bunch of debt. We needed to raise a billion, 250 million to refinance that hmm. debt. That was a change of control. This market, you know, is sort of not a great market to raise money in. So until Monday night at seven o'clock, when we got the money, did I finally press the button to close the merger, and we close it by eight o'clock. Uh, but it was, you know, a long process, including four congressional hearings. Um, a senator um, uh, met with me privately and said that uh, if I would agree to apply the same indecency rules oh, that, that wow. broadcast uh, radio has, that he would uh, support the merger. Um, a senator I, very close to the NAB, probably one of those. Um, a senator, very influential senator, that uh, obviously uh, close to the NAB, as a lot of them are, because again, I mean, the, the NAB is, a, a, you know, with all due respect, is a, probably one of the most powerful lobbying organizations mm -hmm. in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the congressmen and senators spend an awful lot of money. Um, and want to get reelected, and the television stations and the radio stations are very important for them, and they're in their community, and they're you know they represent their constituency. So, with all due respect, you know, for the you know congressional process, there were many people who were against the merger, and these, as far as the congressmen who wrote letters and the senators who wrote letters, they're helping their constituents. I mean, they, they, they don't feel that they're doing something to interfere with our merger. They're saying, if somebody who is in my district is having a problem, I'm going to try to help that person that's in my district. How do you answer somebody, though, that says that they want to put the same restrictions in place uh, and FCC regulations on, on satellite radio? Well, very simple. The answer is just no. <laughs> very good. I mean, it was, it was, it was really here. Okay. I, yeah. I mean, it was no. just I mean, really. It was uh, not a long discussion yeah. about it. And if if I um, needed to I I elaborate, is that um, you know people have decided that they want to pay twelve dollars and ninety five cents uh, a month. Uh, that uh, it's not over the air broadcasting mm -hmm. where you're worried about you know children listening. That this is a pay right. service, and it would be the same argument that uh, MTV has, or the same argument that HBO has, or you know any of the um, you know cable channels have so uh, unless someone was going to try to uh, enact a law that said that uh, you couldn't uh, you know broadcast uh, these words and these discussions on cable or satellite television mm -hmm. and satellite radio and if the Supreme Court were to uphold that um, then it would become law but but for that happening, there's no nothing yeah. the FCC could do or anything like that, yeah. nor should they do it. Hey, uh, let's get to the bottom of the issue here. Did you or did you not bring pink slips for us? No, no. <laughs> pink slips. Um, that, um, you know, uh, a lot I, of people I, like, uh, I know Mel, he's, he's going there just to fire the guys. <laughs> Well, which, I, which I would laugh really hard about, by the well, way. Well, no, I mean, it didn't hurt you that I did that once. That was a very profitable uh, deal for you that guys. That was kind of fun. I mean, uh, but uh, Could, anyway, so... This is the first time we've seen you since, uh, well, since that whole awful thing went down six years yeah, ago, by I, the way. I, we uh, have not been in contact. First time we've uh, talked. And Ant and I are very used to uh, meeting you when we were in trouble. We never had the, the nice meeting. We had one nice coffee. meeting one? in the office upstairs. Well, you guys yeah. just weren't nice so what would happen <laughs> i mean what would happen would be that i was always this charming nice guy and you guys would just be dicks and come up into my office <laughs> and be the way you guys are and, and, uh, and also, they can be dicks that's jim norton if by someone the way has to get fired a lot of us could stay yeah. <laughs> yeah. how is it how satisfying was it to watch eric logan run out of the building with his tail between his legs before you got there oh and i i, I let me tell you i i was a big uh, and still am uh, a huge Eric Logan fan. Uh, Eric worked for me in terrestrial radio. Well, I'm talking about the Eric Logan for the works for XM. Well, no, I, 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 I think he has um, uh, grown and gotten more experience. I saw Eric yesterday, and uh, I am absolutely a fan. And as a matter of fact, um, you know, uh, Eric has decided that he was going to move on. But had uh, Eric not made that decision, there was a very important position, oh. and he knows it. 
Oh, and he knows it. The trash the has to go out. I understand. Yeah, it does yeah. have to be taken yeah. out of the out building. Out the old with the new. And, and uh, the windows have to be washed. And it's a very important <laughs> so, position. So, so I guess, so you guys are not Eric Logan fans? No, I actually, we love, fans. we love Logan. He actually oh. kept us uh, safe he's, the last uh, four years. No, nah, he's, he's a great oh. friend. We finally decided, Mel, after the big uh, fuck up, that we were going to like listen to somebody finally. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, then maybe, maybe t- then I'll bring the pink slips out. Because you guys listening to somebody is something I don't think would exactly work. When you sit out two years, three months, you 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 have a lot of time well, to think, and you're like, you know what? Maybe it's time to listen to somebody yeah, in this and, business. And by the way, you know, I mean, because I, 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 every time you guys uh, talked about me, uh, people made it a point. Oh, it's uh, entertainment, Mel. You, uh, you understand no, no, that? Oh, oh, I absolutely do. No, I absolutely do. And they but probably they made, got it wrong in the they, translation. They made yeah. it a point to give me, you know, the, the tapes stuff. of it, right? So, which, so I'm, I'm aware of it. But the one thing, as I said, I think that was unclear. Okay, is that um, I followed the contract. In other words, if in fact uh, you're it, a contract it, guy, you always have yeah, been. It, oh, yeah. No, but if no, but if in fact there was a contract that basically said that you know we didn't have the right to take you off the air well, believe okay? me we then that would have been a scummy thing there to was do, a point we wished you didn't follow the contract <laughs> if we wanted to yeah. work again well yeah so <laughs> I, I mean the fact that we were smart okay yeah. in so far as designing a contract that provided us with the ability to do what we did mm-hmm. was honorable may not have been liked by right. you and I, I wouldn't like it at all, um, at all. I mean, I, I totally agree. And Why understand. didn't you let us work again? Well, Why did you make thought, us sit out for two years? Well, I, were we I, competition at that point? Absolutely. I thought you guys were terrifically talented. I mean, it wouldn't. Uh, I mean, I, I sort of was involved in hiring you, right? Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. So, Remember that. So no. So at this point, I thought that you guys were absolutely terrific. I thought that you were great talent. And why on earth, if I can pay you not to compete with me, would I want you to compete? Mm. So on one hand, that was frustrating. On one hand, well, uh, talk the to money your lawyer. Was good. Not, I, I don't the know who wrote. Great, the, I don't know who wrote the contract. But if you didn't want me to be able to do that, it shouldn't have been in the contract right. that you agree, that you guys signed. Who read those things though? That, <laughs> who <laughs> reads those things? Well, that's good to know. Pages. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's good to know. That's good to know. That. Uh, no. Good to know. So, <laughs> so no. I mean, I, I thought <laughs> that that decision was an easy one, you right. know. And yeah. uh, even during the process, somebody came along and said, well, you know. What if we gave you some money, mm-hmm. you know, to let you out? And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that kind of And concept, other things. There was a, uh, ah, whatever. Yeah, there was a I, bunch I, of I other things. I don't want to rehash stuff, but, none but of them, it, they was, didn't, it was they, a tough thing to sign. They the didn't time. give me enough of an incentive mm-hmm. right. to, you know, to not have you compete. I, 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 you know. I don't want to bring up the reason why we had to meet with you, but it's one of our favorite stories in radio ever. We fucked up uh, many times, but on this particular occasion, we uh, got the call that we had to see you on uh, January 2nd. This city was cleared out. There was no one in Manhattan. And Anthony and I walk up to your huge office, and, we're, and you made us wait 20 minutes, which was very calculated. I'm wiping my hand because I'm sweating. Like, I, I don't want to, you know, he can't see me sweat. And then you walked in with the most classic line ever. You want, you want to oh, say that? Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. That was The question's boggled me for years. Yeah, it's not really the, a question. There's no real answer no to answer this question. To it. it was, what time do you wake up in the morning and decide you're going to fuck Mel Carmen? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and I'm like, that isn't even... It's already been predetermined that you're gonna. It's just what time is it? So the reason I kept you waiting is I needed to have the right opening line. So it's, Oh, that, that was it. You practicing the line you're so, so you gotta just give me a clue as to what the subject was at this time. It was a Howard thing. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it was so, no, uh, so here, here was the deal. We're uh, really trying not to go down that road. Well, right I don't now, know. But, uh, but it was a Howard uh, thing and uh, Ant and I were sitting there like, do we answer? Do we say 10 o'clock? Do we say 11? Do we say we don't do this? Yeah. I, what was the, what was the answer to that question? There's well, no answer. I, I, I don't know. I guess the answer is that you guys s- don't sleep a lot. <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 I thought you had a death wish. In other words, I just assumed you had a death wish because I, I had made it very clear that, um, you know, um, we're in this is a business. OK. And uh, in this business, we make a whole bunch of money, mm-hmm. a whole lot of money from Howard Stern. Just a tremendous amount. As a matter of fact, when CBS let him go, mm-hmm. their revenue Two hundred million dollars right. affected when Howard left. Sure. Good or bad, two hundred million dollars. Sure. Why on earth would I want anybody, okay, anybody who works for me to hurt me in so far as hurting my money? So I didn't see yeah. from 
you know, you guys got a First Amendment right, but I got a First Amendment right as to what goes on on my radio stations. So you got a right to say things, and I got a right to not have you say it, and we then have a point. So it wasn't. And if you guys and made, that's where the death wish was because yeah. we wanted to just fight it out, and you wanted to. We sit were brave there, enough to just fight it out and, and figure, you know, he's he's strong enough that he could just fight back. Oh, he could, but the winner would have been Clear Channel, and the win winner would you have think? been, of course, because you as think? you divide and you demit, let, let's assume there's a scenario, okay? Right. And and let's take your scenario where you might, <laughs> I, I don't know whether you'd ever have damaged Howard, but let's assume the attempt was to do that, and therefore you accomplished it, and you took something away from Howard. That would make, when we went to advertisers, because we were getting a whole lot of money there, we would get less, mm -hmm. and who would get more would be these other broadcasters that we competed with, because we were as prepared to sell you in the same way, and you know we had general managers that work for you. So I think it was just misguided. I mean, I think, in my opinion, it's sort of the team. You're on a team, okay? Right. And instead of worrying about the opponent, you're fighting with the guys on the team. And forget whether Howard. I mean, if you know, I could have a conversation with Howard about what he did sure. as well. But for, for this conversation here. You guys decided to fight with the quarterback, mm -hmm. okay? You know, as important as you guys were on the team, and you decided instead of worrying about going after uh, Scott Shannon or going after oh, we whoever, went all those guys. We went after everybody. Uh, I just want to... Just so much more mature now, though, yeah. Mel, and uh, that's water under the bridge. Does that sure. mean the show has become more boring? <laughs> yeah. I, hope no, no, no. I hope not. I never <laughs> thought of asking about congressional hearings to lighten it yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is, good. this is good, though. I think it's really yeah. good. I just want to... One more point, we can move on. Yeah. I just want to let you know that at the time, uh, our goal was to make sure Howard didn't hurt, hurt our uh, stock. That was the only thing we were. We weren't actually trying to, you know, knock him out of the game. We were making sure he wasn't going to knock us out of the game. That and I, was, and that's where the confusion was because we saw, growing up, what he did to other radio shows, and it was ugly, man. These guys had massive ratings in their cities and stuff, and Howard was able to just wipe them off the map. That scared the shit out of us when we came to New York into his backyard, and that was our whole, whole goal going into that. Maybe it got confusing, and there was a gray area, but our whole thing was. Let's make sure he doesn't do to us what he did to DiBella and the rest of them. And that's the area that I think that uh, you guys and I had a disagreement. Because yeah, absolutely. You, you guys thought, okay, that he was doing that, okay? And, and maybe he did, okay? In other words, I did not hear that or sense that, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, I had told you had a, uh, as a matter of fact, the program director, so that when you guys left, um, it wasn't about me dumping it on you guys. The general manager left. The oh, you yeah. know everybody who was responsible for the left. Sex or Sam thing. And I, well, yeah. and and because, not not so much that event, but the sense was that I had made clear what would work in our company. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, it appeared that there was a willful violation of what I had made clear to the general manager at the time sure. would be acceptable. So if. Howard was violating anything that you thought was hurting your brand and hurting you, that didn't come to me. It came to me, you know, when you guys reacted on the air. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, so that was, but but that was the history. I just want to finally a, get my uh, point out there, whether it's right or wrong. That's really what our thinking was back then. I, like I, the would rather, I like the other idea <laughs> that said you guys had a death wish. I think, that, <laughs> I think rather hey, you well, <laughs> We sort of He's did. Heard you, us, yeah. you see where you put us, NEW? I mean, you could help us out a little bit. <laughs> He's heard, you you He's could heard put us on Howard Station in New York, and we wouldn't have had a death wish. That would have been That would have been amazing for everybody involved. And as a matter of fact, NEW sucked except for our show. So, um, and, and Ron and Fez, who uh, started doing a really so, good job at the end there. So, do you remember Tom Chisano? Sure. Oh, sure. But didn't you work for Tom? Yeah, yeah. we I love Tom now. Tom's great. We used to hate that guy. Tom is great and remains a good friend. We love mm -hmm. Tom. Tom was the general manager of that radio station. He used to call us up. Tom did not want you guys on the oh. in uh, I'll tell you it wasn't because of your talent <laughs> didn't watch you on in the afternoon because he believed that he had a controversial morning show yeah, that some sell. advertisers yeah. weren't going to advertise on yeah. so he wanted a station mm -hmm. that would have an ability to have those national advertisers someplace else. Right. So it was Tom, because in my opinion, from a image point of view, from a brand point of view, I mean, it would have become what, in essence, Howard did with his channel, you know, on the other satellite radio mm -hmm. company.
You could say serious. You own it now. <laughs> well, no, I know I can say it. I just don't want to, you know, you know disrupt your listeners. We've been That's saying all. the other yeah, company yeah, for yeah. too long. It's serious. Yeah, XM but no, radio. no, but I mean, I think that you know Howard, you know, had a, a, had a vision for a, a channel that would have all kinds of content that would be really compelling and you know very different than everyone else, and uh, it would have fit perfectly. But the advertising scenario wasn't attractive. I remember one nice meeting we had with you, and man, Mel had the best office in Manhattan, the, the greatest view ever. You saw nine eleven happen yeah, from your office. And, 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 I forget. remember we talked about that, but you were like, man, I just wish you you guys and Howard would just get along, and you know, maybe I could somehow get you guys together, and you were starting to try to figure something out. And, and then, now we're one big happy and family. And then we did the sex with Sam. Well, we're just, uh, you know, getting some of this out, yeah. and then we can move on with uh, the future. But here. more importantly, is Charlie Rose a nice guy? He did a hell of an interview on Charlie Rose. I'll tell you, I, I've known Charlie for a long time, and he is a hell of a guy, and he's a great interview, and I, I just did CNBC. Um, before I came over here, mm -hmm. and you get like six minutes, you know, yeah. and the idea is, I mean, I want to talk. I mean, you know, I mean, if I'm going to be interviewed, I don't want to have a soundbite, and Charlie gives you an hour, and it's great, and he's smart, and he's terrific. He's not intimidated by anybody. I watched him talk to Schwarzenegger and Bloomberg together, and, you know, he agreed with them, and there's certain things, he, you know, he puts, holds a paper and puts his hand up, and he'd stop them, and he'd give, like, a real interview. It wasn't like a fluff interview. Yeah, no, he's terrific. He's really good. What a boring question that was. And, I, uh, 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 uh speaking of <laughs> nervous... <laughs> I'm getting very nervous. He was just he was just Charlie turning Rose. the truck. He was yeah. turning the truck yes. around. I think he's on. trying to demonstrate that if for any reason you guys weren't around, oh, that exactly. there's a role for him on oh, one no. of our news talk yeah. stations. He's still, no. he's still there. The, 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 uh, he's Charlie Rose. I'm Jimmy Mortgage. I don't want to lose. <laughs> Jimmy Mortgage. <laughs> hey, uh, have you checked out the XM Research? No, I was. Because um, uh, I mean. Eric said we did great for XM. So here's but a, it was reported in Arbitron that we didn't do so great, and it, it doesn't make sense. Something doesn't doesn't uh, it got you it. know. So I, I feel very comfortable um, uh, being able to talk about anything I know. Right. So um, the Department of Justice. Yeah, you're not uh, allowed to look at that stuff until the merger goes through. I understand that. So the first time I was able to um, get to XM was yesterday. So uh, mm -hmm. I showed up uh, at X7 yesterday, had a town hall meeting with the employees. First time I got to do that. Have not seen any, you know, contracts at all. Have not had access to any information. Uh, have no idea about anything other than the fact that lately I've been getting uh, emails from uh, your fans Oh, Talk Jesus to Christ. Me. Knock it oh, off, my people. God. What are you, what are you oh, trying to do? Ruin us? Oh, no, 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 no. So, you know, yeah. oh, my you know, God. What um, did they write yeah. now? So you should assume... <laughs> they might be Howard fans. We can believe they're our fans. That's all I want to say. Yeah. <laughs> then that would explain it. Then that would explain it, the reason that they were doing were that. Were they positive hey. emails? Like, congratulations on the... <laughs> yeah. Boy, Mel, you're one hell of a guy. Yeah. What a great yeah. company you built. If you get rid of ONA, let me tell you what's going to happen. Yeah. Let me know. So Can I really fast? I, I uh, listened in on the conference call on a train yesterday. I want to thank you because my elbow uh, is sore because I, I was like this for an hour. Listen what to the conference whole thing. call? Uh, with the, the employees. Oh, yesterday. was that? Oh, I didn't know you could even access yeah, it. Yeah, we were all listening in. Oh, okay. And uh, there's two things I want to bring up. Who fainted during the meeting? Uh, so I'm. Um, also, I hear, are, are, are you all right? And then you're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Just drag her out. I got things to do here. <laughs> so so good, th good thing this is radio, so people might be able to believe what I'm going to say. <laughs> so uh, because of my startling good looks, <laughs> that very often when I take the stage, women like, you know, swoon over yeah, me and, like and collapse. So yeah. it's just scary. So uh, we're having this room. It, it's, it's a horrible facility to do it. You know, we have, you know, a whole hundreds of people mm -hmm. cramped, standing up in this thing. And at some point, uh, I didn't even know if it was a woman or a man, about halfway through it, just collapsed. And the, you know, security came and they carried her out. So I afterwards, after it was over, I, I went to try to find out what happened. And it was a, uh, a, a young girl who uh, works there um, who just fainted. And mm. uh, she was fine. And I asked her to go home and she didn't want to go home. And, you know, um, you know, I had a car outside and said, can we take you home? And no. And she... So the people there really don't want to hear Mel say go home <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at this point. <laughs> and it didn't go, maybe. <laughs> You're fired for yeah. fainting. I never <laughs> used the other words. <laughs> so... Uh, get a, yeah, basically, get a clue. <laughs> so she what? asked, uh, I said to her, it has happened before, she said, not since high school. So, I mean, you know, just seemed uh, she painted so uh, I, and then another guy asking about health insurance I'm like yeah. health, health ins there's so many questions you can be asking so now. what I was well I, uh, what I was shocked about is and, and again I thought you guys lost a step okay because I remember in the old days when I'd have a shareholder meeting mm -hmm. okay you know there would uh, there would always be but 
you know, we'd be having a stare. We didn't set that up. I swear no, I know. We it never was just coincidental. Of course not. No, I, so, what would I swear on that one. Right. And I, and I, I mean, swear. Right, right, right. Right. Uh, but we I, have but passionate fun. fans. I swear we did not set up those anyway, calls. So you they, know that there were those calls, right? So yeah. I'm waiting now for my, you know, Opie and Anthony questions, Christ. you know, and was sort of disappointed that I didn't get it. So in Good. answer to it, so I have not um, had a conversation. Uh, in all due respect, and I'm, I, I mean, as important as you guys are, uh, I had not had a conversation until I saw Eric, you know, uh, late in the afternoon, and he had told me that uh, there's a contract period or something coming up. This is the first I heard of it, and I know nothing about it. I don't even, believe it or not, I don't even know what you guys make today. So ah. I'm sure it is bizarre. It is it's ridiculous amounts of money. Hot. Don't look at our contract, so, but I'll tell you, it's a lot of money. I'm assuming. So anyway, but that's well, all I know. Compared to Howard, uh, I'm let's, uh, uh, we got 63 days left. Um, oh, do you? Yeah. And it's, uh, disc are discussions going on? No, I bet you're chomping at the bit to to maybe even get a call from Robert Eatman, Super Agent Bob Eatman again. He doesn't deal with <laughs> oh, Robert Eatman. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. I, I may. I, I'm not sure I've ever met him. You take melatonin. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. But in all seriousness, there are no discussions going on. Sixty three days and counting. But then no discussions. Or you? No, nah, I think the whole thing was you know nothing was going to be done until uh, the merger went through. And, well, so. and, and I'll make sure. We'll I'll, all I can do is make sure that. And we uh, want to. We want to continue. We we okay. love uh, the Great. freedom of satellite radio. Yeah, I, I think uh, you know. The, the people see, at see, SM seem to be happy of everything. I, I, I mean, I, I'm not hearing saying, thank God you're here so you could fire them. No, right. no one said that. No one, has, no one has said that yet to me. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm assuming that uh, if, in fact, uh, you know, you guys uh, want to stay and if, in fact, uh, XM uh, obviously is happy and wanting to stay, I, all I can do is facilitate, make sure that there are conversations. And you know, we got like a thing going on with uh, regular radio. Yeah, that's, How does that make you feel? Well, I mean, it, it, here's my attitude on it, okay, because I've said it before. We're asking people to pay $12.95, right? We're asking them to pay for something. So the ability to give, the, the more we give them, that's the same, the less desirable it is. So if we started putting commercials on our, you know, forget those few clear channel stations that XM mm -hmm. is stuck with, right? <laughs> if we started to um, put commercials, as an example, on our music stations, you'd sit there and say, why would somebody subscribe to satellite radio? Because they're going to hear those same obnoxious commercials there. So the more exclusive content you can have, the better off it is. So in a perfect world, okay, where I'm going to pay a good amount of money, right, it's going to be because the only way a subscriber can get it is on satellite radio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if, in fact, um, somebody feels that they um, need to be on terrestrial radio so as an example uh we currently carry sean hannity i'm a huge sean hannity fan um but sean is on a whole lot of terrestrial radio stations mm -hmm. and he's on satellite radio without getting into amounts you should assume the amount of money that sean is getting paid oh, yeah. is not really material right because of right. the fact we love having them mm -hmm. but you know there's an am fm radio generally every place where there's a satellite radio i mm -hmm. mean there's not necessarily satellite radio everywhere there's True. an am fm right. radio so if somebody wanted to hear something that's on terrestrial radio they can just push the button now that and you guys i, I know it's different right so i mean i know what you're doing <laughs> different and stuff like that but we had a um uh, an important performer where there was a disagreement with uh, the programming people on how much money he wanted and he wanted to keep doing satellite radio and what we did was we carved out um a few markets where they were on which were not so material to our subscriber growth, right? I mean, it wasn't New York, L.A., Chicago, Philly. I mean, it wasn't a top 10 market. It was sort of a few smaller this markets. This is the Bubba deal. That's the Bubba deal. So yeah. in the case of Bubba, where, you know, we've said, okay, you want to do a terrestrial radio and a satellite radio, fine. I understand why you want to do it. I wish you didn't. I wish, um, you know, Sirius was able to justify the money you wanted, but, you know, it's not. So if in order for you to do what you need to do and what you want to do, and he's a terrific talent, we're going to carve out, you know, um, Tampa, two other, you know, markets, mm -hmm. and he's doing that. And but, you know, why would I want um, Howard, you know, forget you guys because you, you know, you got it committed to be on in terrestrial radio? Why would people pay twelve ninety five? Right. Mm -hmm. Bubba said yesterday that if uh, we stay with the new company, it's a deal breaker for him. <laughs> um, are you guys and Bubba are not? Uh... I, I don't. I've never even met the guy. Oh, okay. I, so I could care less. Yeah. So I mean, uh, like I, Ant said, he's he's not on the board. 
Yeah, <laughs> you know, but it's a deal breaker for him. So, well, you know, a deal breaker for and, the merger. And yeah. I, I would hope that Bubba. You know, I think Bubba's a great talent, <clears throat> and uh, you know, uh, as I said, it, it disappointed me. And I, I went to the programming people to see if, in fact, there was a way, you know, to carve out uh, more money for him. Uh, and what Bubba thought he needed. Um, or wanted was just more than what um, Sirius was prepared to pay. So mm-hmm. this was a compromise. But it, sure. it, but it is a compromise because I don't think it, it. I don't think it's good. I, I think that um, you know if, if HBO started running commercials during those movies, you know, or during their stuff, it would look like another right. channel. And why do you want to pay for something? You know, you don't. I mean, you pay for CBS and your cable bill, but people don't sort of think right. about that. If it's just going to be another broadcast. So basically, you're saying we could do both, which is good. That's <laughs> yeah, what we sure. needed today. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> all right. What else can I answer? Why don't we, why don't we uh, move on with the future? So all the merger right. happened. So I have, just so you know, because I mean, I, you, you're a busy man. I'm no, sure no, you, I, I'm not. This is very important, but I have a, ta- and I wanted to get here fast, okay? okay. Because I didn't want where to, you got to be. I have a town hall meeting with all the employees. So the the same serious? meeting at serious. Okay. So uh-huh. At ten thirty. Okay. Uh, all right. Really fast in the future, because now the merger went through. Everyone is really, really confused. Like. Uh, how is this going to work? The, okay. the ABC. So, so let me give you just a few things, and I, know I, I try not to bore everybody. If you combine the two companies today, we have um, $2.2 billion of revenue, right? Which makes us the second largest radio company in the world. Wow. So only Clear Channel mm-hmm. is bigger than we are in radio, and we're, going, we're growing, and they're not. Um, if you combine the number of subscribers, we have about $19 million. The only company in the subscription business that's bigger than us is Comcast. Mm-hmm. So we have more subscribers than Dish Network, DirecTV, Time Warner Cable. Hmm. So we now finally have a uh, you know critical mass, a big company. We also are going to have some synergy, so there'll be cost savings and be making money down the road. Um, if you're an XM subscriber, you're listening now. Uh, your radio will not be obsolete. Nothing will change, right? I mean, if, you know, nothing will change. Somewhere down the road. Um, you know, probably in the next two to three months, we're going to announce that there's an opportunity for uh, existing XM subscribers with the same radio that they have now to be able to get some content from Sirius. Not all mm-hmm. of Sirius, but some content from Sirius. And by the way, vice versa, the same thing. So the Sirius subscribers will be able to get select XM programming. Um, Are you willing to say what some of that uh, series program no, but the would one, be available? No. Obviously Howard. Exactly. Obviously, obviously Howard. Would so, you go so something like NF, uh, the NFL? So here's what I've said. So I mean, okay. so far, and, and uh, what I've said, Howard for sure, and selected sports programming and other programming. So we will, as, as soon as we can, because we, you know, got to look at contracts. So, you know, the first question, mm-hmm. if I do, if I now say what's going to be available from Sirius on XM, the next thing someone's going to say, well, okay, what's going to be available from XM on Sirius? And I haven't seen a contract. Right. So I have no idea. Would you like us to be heard on Sirius? Well, if, in fact, you were with the company. Right. No, I understand. Why wouldn't I? Okay. Sure. <laughs> No, absolutely. we were with the company. Well, no, I mean, you tell me you have a contract that's up, and I have no yeah. idea any about. It. But if, if if this were today, okay, why wouldn't I mean? Yeah, yeah. you had a large fan base. You're entertaining. I mean, you know, I think. Would you keep this channel or just our particular show? Uh, what else is on the channel? Ron and Fez. Okay. I want to give what a else? plug in for and Ron and Fez. What else? What else? Other than Ron and Fez? Ron's uh, programming. Uh, maybe maybe Than and Sam. No, just kidding. Ron and Fez and us. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know. That's if that, pretty much it. I don't know if that means a well, channel. We got some others, but we'd have to look look at at you know we'd have to have some discussion with programmers but uh. so let's assume that um, the programming people will sort of take a look at what is available and what's possible and make the decision mm-hmm. but you know uh, I don't know Ron and Fez well I knew they worked for us in Washington at They're one point I'm extremely that, talented I know the feedback that I got from them was terrific I, you know I have only good things uh, you know t- that I've heard about them so if in fact our programming people said you know that Opie and Anthony and Ron and Fez would be part of that offering that sounds great to me awesome will my horrible boring Charlie Rose question hurt me during negotiations <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I, I, d- d- is your contractual name the same name as you use on the air? Uh, no. Oh, okay, good. So this way I'll never know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. a picture on there uh, or anything. So yeah. I, can I, I have a question about, too. The one thing they keep saying in the papers about the iPods, and, and I guess content, like uh, spoken content stuff you can't get on an iPod is the best way to compete. Because every article now with, with satellite, it seems like the media is just trying to shit on the merger. 
So um, I think, I mean, I think after this merger, right, uh, there's just a tremendous amount of competition. I mean, I, I think the broadcasters are competition. I think HD radio, whatever that'll be, you know, uh, as it evolves, will be competition. Internet radio, Wi-Fi will be everywhere. You'll get it in the, your car. There'll be competition. Uh, iPhones, uh, you know, iPods. Uh, so I think our success is that we really want to have the best content. So it's not about content. There's, it's ubiqu- I mean, there's plenty of content that's out there. It's having content that can't be replicated mm-hmm. elsewhere. And that's what our mission is, right? So if you start with us today being the second largest company in this audio entertainment space, so, yeah, will there be Internet radio companies? Yeah, but, like, which one is going to be our competitor? I mean, specifically, you know, if you're, a stock, if you're buying a stock, mm-hmm. you can, okay, you can buy, well, Clear Channel is going to become private, so it will be the largest, uh, you know, publicly traded radio company. So you can buy a Sirius. Or you can buy a what, you know, and I'm not talking about a device company. Apple's a great company and stuff like that. But what Internet radio company, mm-hmm. you know, are you talking about or, you know, what um, other kind of technology? So, so I think we're really well positioned, uh, you know, to compete in the future. And I think it's, it's real important, you know, which is why I'm here, right? I mean, I think uh, important content is real important, you mm-hmm. know, um, and uh, as long as we're smart in being able to keep our focus on that. Um, we think it's great. What's the next step? The next step is to make it happen. I mean, the issue is the as, so one as could, grueling when, as this has been, it's the easy part. Right. right? <laughs> I mean, now it's got to work. I mean, for the XMers, when will they be able to uh, start listening to serious programming? So I know you said, I said in the it, fall, but yeah. can you give people a taste before then? You, you mean listeners? Well, no. The only, I mean, what yeah. has to happen is that there's a certain amount of bandwidth. Right. That we based on compression technology that with you're getting everything you get now. Right, everything you get now, you'll then be able to add some selected sure. channels, some sure. few channels. Right, if in fact we have, uh, let's assume that there's an XM channel that is in a similar genre as mm-hmm. a serious channel, but it's a better channel. Right. You know, I mean, it's programmed better, and you know, uh, then why wouldn't we want to make it available to serious subscribers as well? So I think as time goes on, the the, the content will morph. Toward each yeah, other. get rid of the redundancies, but, and but, then... but not just get rid of it. Make them better. In other words, so if we both have a '70s channel, mm-hmm. why not make the best '70s channel from both of those and make it available to subscribers on both services? Right. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. if we both are doing five or six country music channels, yeah. you know, I mean, why do ten unless there's ten great ones? Why not do five really good and make them available on both services? And that's something that we would like to do as fast as we can, because the thing that we want to do is to make sure the churn. So, you know, there's, there's, you want to get additional subscribers and, and you then wanna you want to keep them. Yeah. And I think the better our content is. Right. The better our content is, the more we keep them. So mm-hmm. that's where that focus. Can you is. tell people to start buying radios again? Because I know because of the merger, no one was buying. And I went into the Best Buys in the Circuit Cities, and those displays were like dusty, and they were pushed to the back, and because no one knew what was going on. So they're like, "Why am I going to invest in a new unit if I don't know what the hell this merger is going to do to me?" And you don't know how painful it was for me doing exactly uh, the same mm-hmm. thing, right? So, uh, and I and I think what happened, and, and I've spoken to you know the CEOs of these you know Best Buy and Circuit City and. and is that it's it, if you think about Blu-ray DVD and HD mm-hmm. DVD sure. and consumers were confused and they didn't know which one to buy so they didn't buy anything either right. yeah. so you got now it's like you got this AM radio and you got this FM radio and they're sort of separate and you don't know which one you know to buy right so uh, the hope is that now that the merger is there we'll be able to eliminate that confusion be able to talk about the fact that both radios are going to work you're going to be able to get you know the content you know the best of content and by the way just buy satellite radio i mean in other words you know from our point of view i'm indifferent you know whether it's XM or Sirius and and the great news for the company combined is that every car company Every right. car company, you know, is putting, you know, these satellite radios in. Mm-hmm. And, and we all know from being in the radio business, if you want to be successful in radio, Gotta it's have the, it car. In the car. And, and those deals were made a long time ago, and they're finally coming. The, the Penetration is coming up. Finally, mm-hmm. yeah. Because yeah. a lot of these deals were like, well, just starting in the year 2008, and it was 2005 when they made the deal. So well, that's that's going through the roof now. So um, I told you guys yeah, you that gotta I got to leave. Gotta so go. I got to leave. So, But I, I, I do want to come back with the um, CDs I have. 
you know, of all of this stuff. <laughs> I, and I, what I want to do, and what I really want to do is play them all, okay? And, oh, and, and, and oh. be able to have the comment of why you characterize me. Ex- I mean, I, I, some of them I understood, but there were like, some that even I couldn't understand. You know something? I, could, could, I would like to hear them because I doubt any of that was me. No, I, I bet oh, it was open. You were out sick that day. Yes, <laughs> I think I was. Or sleeping on the air. It's, Absolutely terrific. Thank you. Thank hey. you for inviting me. Uh, Wait, Mel, thank you for everything you, you guys have done here. Can you give me an here. example? Uh, no. I, is even, it, is even, it real bad? Listen, I was born, you know, in a tough <laughs> neighborhood, okay? And, um, you know, I mean, I grew up in New York City and went to public school yeah. and stuff. And I heard words that I had to go to Howard to ask me what they were. <laughs> oh, boy. Jesus. Well, so, um, Maybe we start over now. <laughs> Sounds like a maybe good we idea. Start over. How about we, we say goodbye to Mel and we thank him for coming, like gentlemen, and we take a break and then we all just go wipe sweat off our hands. Yeah. <laughs> Mel, t- uh, two things. Who does uh, our agent talk to? Who's, uh, who's the boss? And and we'll announce that tomorrow. Okay. What's happening okay. is, is that the so, assumption is going to be so someone will get a hold of Bob. I'm assuming at this yeah. point. Yeah. So so why don't we leave it that like uh, that? Okay. And the w- second thing is, I'll we, have somebody do that. Can we take the rest of the day off because this was a really <laughs> tough interview for us? And uh, now that you're working for me, uh, I don't know exactly what your schedule is, but if you know if you're making a lot of money, I would assume that this is a 24 hour, seven day a week gig. So yeah. constant. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. Thanks and thanks for everything. Mel, you guys thank been doing. You. You've been helping us get a lot of subscribers. Mel, it, it, it was a pleasure seeing Take you. Take care. Again. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, and everyone. Thank you, Mel. I'll we'll be back. That's great. Thanks. All right, we'll, All right, so we'll take a break. Time, okay, but I mean, no, go, go, go. We're up taking up a break. We'll be back. Shock jerks. Opie and Anthony. Well, that didn't go too well, huh? Oh, that was wonderful. And you heard uh, you heard from Mel. We could leave, but so you're 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 lucky to have us uh, still broadcasting today. We are, I didn't hear him say we could leave. Yeah, he did. I didn't either. I heard it in there. He seemed to be implying that if you're making a lot of money, you should... which we're not, so that meant we could have left. Who's farting? I got nervous. That was the fear <clears throat> leaving my body finally. Dude, holy shit! He was fine. He was, he was very. He's cool. intimidating. Was... Nah, not he's... as a guy though. It was like it, like it was almost like he just came down and just started. Ra- it's because you know that he could wreck your life yeah. if you wanted to but like as a guy he just came in and was you know just I don't know he, was, he seemed pretty he was, he was comfortable yeah uh, Rich were you listening to the big interview with Mel Carmen you know what I liked the best how you turned and it was it's true though and I never realized this about you about the Howard thing you guys were just on the defense oh that was a about, lie stop huh that was a lie I know but how he made it look so real <laughs> You, you, I was really amazed at that interview. Just listening. If I was in the car, you're amazed at a pinwheel retard. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> My Charlie Rose question. I thought. Yes, that was yes, such yeah. a please. Well, that was a joke. Get Kevin. off of yeah. this. Son- was I know. Charlie Rose a nice guy, but then he called me out and said it was a boring question. <laughs> it was good. It's a good sign. First day on the job. What the hell's he doing on a, on one of the shows? That exactly. Are, my platform. Yeah, get the chinless dullard off the air. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, where's uh, Don Wicklin? Ah, Don, lucky to still have a job, Wicklin. Well, he might have been fired on the. Uh, did he fire oh, you on the elevator? Yeah, did he Don? fire you on the elevator or in the hallway or something? Oh, like, no. No. I didn't want to no. kid about it because it's going to be ugly for examers in the near future, but real soon. Some serious people, too, are probably much more examined. But I, I didn't have the heart to ask him that because yeah. there's some good people that are going to be out of work down there. I wanted to but ask you about the shitty logo. There's a reason Mel left for the day, I'm thinking. But you have a new he was logo? there yesterday. He's going back tomorrow. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yesterday he did the town hall meeting with yeah, yeah. everybody. And He's then... waiting for the wolf. What? No, uh, right? Yeah, the wolf. What yeah, the, the wolf to kind of clean up all the blood and stuff, and he'll be back tomorrow. The wolf will be here shortly. Mm. Yeah, you know, he's a he's a, he's a businessman. Always has been. He's all business. He knows the deal. You like the interview, Donnie? You know, I was really impressed. Opie, seriously, um, I think you guys did a great job. Oh, you asked the you greatest sure. questions. Yeah, you answered everything. He's. Very- <laughs> I thought it was very helpful when I mentioned. The most frustrating part. Yes. Oh. Because during a process, there's a yeah. lot of frightening parts. And I feel yes. like that really bringing it home. What was the most, you wanted to know, the if, most? If anybody out there could have seen what a douche I was holding my pen, I, he should have taken <laughs> it and <laughs> fucking stabbed me in the throat. <laughs> he probably wanted to. I was holding the pen like a gentleman's about to ask a yes. question. Excuse me, a gentleman yeah. is asking a, a gentleman's question. Gentleman's question, if I may. His what name? was the most 
frustrating part. No, I, I stressed the because the most would have made me sound like an asshole. What was the most? What was the most frustrating? <laughs> implying that there were many, but yes. what was the most? I even tapped my pen like this. <laughs> you know, you, that commands you power. You douche. Uh, his, Mel, what was the most? His next interview, you're the answer. <laughs> what is the most frustrating part of the O and A interview? Get, you know what? You get it. I'm so glad I walked I out. Wish, so I wish glad. I was 20 feet tall so I could just bite through you. <laughs> that, was a, that was a good line if I would have delivered it, it was right. Good, it was good to see Mel in the short chair. <laughs> he looked like a little kid. And then St and fucking that helped him. us, actually. But then Steve comes over. He looked like the kid in uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, like, you know, at the table <laughs> know. on that date. Uh, Steve comes over yeah. and, and, and basically takes the, the headphones off of Mel's head. And Mel, like, grabbed them, like, <laughs> hey, you fucking fruit, get your hands off me. Hey, Steve, why don't you tackle him and make the headphones get fall off that way? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that I would help him. Let's go to the phones. Uh, they're chomping. Darren, North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, the whole time Mel was talking, all I could think about was little Jimmy's Mel Carmazzi bit. Well, that wasn't a bad one. That was basically uh, making fun of the person who screwed his name up when I said Mel Carmazzi because somebody that was in Congress when he was doing that didn't have his name right. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not a hard name to get. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, what are you doing? They're whispering about things that men yeah. of their ilk understand. Uh, we're getting the audio out to uh, XM's PR department. It's racist. Texas PR department. PR department. Yeah, PR department. it was so funny. You, I, I really wanted to introduce uh, uh, Steve. Hello, so now, Mr. Carmazin. I had the chance outside, yes. and I didn't do it in a stupid voice. So you Hi. might have, you might know me from my band Foundry. Hi, Mel. Yeah. You'll know me for the next three weeks. <laughs> yeah. You'll see me no God. more. No, it was just funny watching you pull the headphones off of him. Because he was wearing one. Did you see how, how he put them on his head? He, was, he, yeah, slept he almost one of ripped his ear off. No, no, I didn't. He, I'm sure he knew it was not right, and he was fixing it. No, but wasn't. then you rushed right. in there and just kind of grabbed Could, him off his head. I fixed it for him. Like Could, it was a hat It was fire. courteous. Could the pest help us out? We're going to say some fine things about Mel Carmazin, and we need these tapes sent over immediately. Oh, no, they'll edit them. Make them <laughs> yeah. sound horrible. <laughs> nice things. Horrid people they are. We should have claimed, ah, oh, you know, they edit that crap. It's not true. Let's say hi to Jeremy in Cleveland. Jeremy. Hey, boys. Just wondering if your jaws are hurting from all the love fest. All right. It was nice. What are we supposed to do? Curse out. Hold on, hold on. Let's be realistic here for a second. What are we supposed to do? Curse out the CEO, the new CEO of the company we work for? No. Bl answer me. You cuss them out, but, you know, you guys, they kind of backed down. But what? Thing. What did we back down on? What did we not address? We addressed everything. We talked. What are we supposed to do? Get in his face? Give me an example. You guys did this Ron and Fez talk pretty quickly. You moved on quick from that. We what? We mentioned Ron and Fez. Oh, hey, they were a very talented hey, show. Fucko. What the fuck are you talking hey, about? Hey, fucko. We didn't have to mention Ron and Fez. It was never going to come up, you fucking yeah, asshole. fuck Ron and Fez in their fuck holes. You're such a I'm sorry, guys. I wasn't trying to like. Jeremy, go your fuck yourself. Now nah, you just you do we didn't, you're nitpicking that we, we didn't purposely you made we purposely made sure we brought up Ron and Fez. You idiot! There, that wasn't going to come up in this discussion. And go fuck yourself. Mel said, "Who's on the channel? Opie and Anthony, and who else? Ron and Fez." And then Oak was in a really talented show. He goes, "Yeah, I had good, good feedback on them." And then Mel said, "All right, well, who else?" Like he's looking to know what the, the channel and content is. I went back is. to Ron and Fez again. That guy's a dick, Jeremy. Let's Was go to Bill. Jeremy, and, that guy? Uh, yeah, Bill in West Virginia. Fool. Bill. How you doing? I can't believe, Jimmy, you are the greatest. Thank you. <laughs> when Steve came in and said he was cutting up sound bits for <laughs> XM's PR department and you called him racist. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't think the next time, serious XM should move on in that direction with breaking departments down by race. <laughs> Same joke twice. Good. Yeah, That's my gift. Let's go to Charlie Mike. Charlie Rose, a nice guy. I'm Ted the Bad Question. Yes. <laughs> Ted. <laughs> Mel, do you have a satellite radio that you like to hold? Oh, was I a nervous Nelly? <laughs> <laughs> Ted the Bad Question. Asker. I'm a fool. Is Charlie Rose taller than me? <laughs> God almighty. Was it chilly in his studio? Comment. <laughs> God, am I awful? Brian and Philly. <laughs> Hey, Brian. Uh, <clears throat> not buying that whole uh, bit. At the end of 60 days, I think you're here and you're fired. You're he never, fired. Absolutely not. He never would have showed up. Mel, the way it worked was Mel, we heard Mel's yeah. coming in. Um, and it, we, we kind of bothered he didn't go through Roland, but we figured, all right, look, Mel wants to come in. <laughs> Do you want Mel Carmazzi? Carmazzi? I Mel, Car Mel Carmazzi. But, but the thing was, it was like, that was a great thing. I mean, uh. A show of good faith is yeah, what that is. In cool. the business world. 
It's a show of good faith. He came in and sat for 45 minutes. He didn't need to do that. No. Um, so, you know, no, we're not getting fired, dude. And I never thought we would. Why would you throw off a show? Why? I, especially when I always raise the tough questions. Oh, you're great. Mr. Me. Mel. Yeah, oh, I was, I, I, I really. Most frustrating. The most frustrating. Someone should have put a fucking fish hook in me and caught a bass with it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking worry nothing. Mel Fabersham. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been. It could have been worse. We could have had Rich Voss in here. Now, Rich. Oh, that would have been what? so bad. What would you make believe Don Wicklin is uh, the great Mel Carmazan? I'm We're calling him boss. the great Mel Carmazan uh -huh. now. Make sure you get that tape off to Mel immediately. Now, Rich, what would you uh, say to Mel Carmazan? You got a chance to to make an impression. What would it be? Go ahead. Well, in the future, would you could you see Opie and Anthony and Howard on the same channel, one in the morning and one in the afternoon? Let's see. One of them watch twelve hours apart. <laughs> What's what, Thank what, you, that's Dan. a good question. It's it's, it's called an AM PM joke, Rich. Actually, oh. that was a good question. I, mean, I can't <laughs> falter for that. Maybe oh. we should ask that. Who knows? Uh, you know. <laughs> no, I think I think what's I think he sort of explained it, but basically there's there's no there's nothing in it for him or the new company to just throw us on serious. But if you throw us on serious and make you know, then pay to hear us, then you're getting more revenue into the new company. And here's the next question. And, and the same with, uh, you know, their yes. programming over here. Just throwing it on <clears throat> XM is not going to yeah. really help. Well, what I don't understand, and the maybe I got this line. wrong, I thought throughout the last couple of years, XM had more subscribers than Sirius. That's they did. They did. Then how, with more subscribers, would Sirius be able to take over XM? Well, it, it has to do with debt restructuring as to uh -huh. why it worked that way. And Mel was probably the stronger CEO. Not to knock the other ones, but uh -huh. I mean, come on, he's Mel. It's a debt thing. And it's a debt thing, yeah. but it's also Sirius caught up. Uh, them adding Howard was really, I thought it was a smart move. They okay? never caught up. No, but I mean, compared, XM didn't <laughs> continue to, to beat them by as much as they had. <laughs> they, they were closing <clears throat> the gap big time. Yeah, that's actually they're closing the gap. Uh, uh, did Mel uh, have to do paperwork? I, I'm assuming Master Poe made him do paperwork. Uh, yes. Sit down. Yes. Let's say hi to Kevin in Houston, Mel, Texas. I have to search your bag. Kevin? Yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, what's up? Hey, great show today, really. I, I got to tell you, I really respect uh, Mel Carmazan now for coming on the show, but I got to tell you, these fucking listeners out there that bash you guys... For you know, not asking the tough questions. Shut the fuck up. Quit listening if you don't like it. It's amazing. It's so goddamn irritating. They're not, they're not fans of that point. They're 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 today. not Shut fans of. Fuck up, people. Sorry. It's like, what question would should they have asked? They're not. Like, but let me just jump out. in. They're not fans at that point. They're haters. There's a lot of haters that are disguising themselves at, as fans, and the show's not going to change. This is what it has become. And if you don't like it anymore, if the show's passed you by, then go somewhere else. You're not a fan anymore. You're a hater. And you should get a bloody tampon thrown at your head. Oh, Absolutely. Like, for instance. Why should I have a treat? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Copper candy, as I call it. Love it. They disguise like a Jolly Rancher. But they disguise Penny themselves. flavor. <laughs> they disguise themselves as fans. Joke. <laughs> but they're not fans anymore. The important thing here. They might have been. We have a red-headed woman out here. Who, sir, <clears throat> I take it you're with her. Yellow. She's lovely. Yeah? Uh, are you a married thing. couple or a dating couple? Married man, Mr. Grady. What? You married man, are you? There's no oh. mic out there. Can we? Well, I would, uh, oh, he is, but can we see your fart box? Her. Is Steve out there? Why is the guy waving off like it's fucking aircraft carrier? What's your name, Miss <laughs> Megan? Hi, Megan. Why no fellow with you? I'm not hitting on you. Hi, it's I'm Megan. Sure you aren't. Megan's Irish. Go Where on, are you from, Megan? Um, Philadelphia. Welcome from Philly. Um, Going one. Uh, it's called Philadelphia. Yes. It is. <laughs> yeah. Philadelphia. Today, today is with Matt That's Wednesday. Good. I know this. Well, I almost did it on. Why don't right you? Now. Why don't you just to, just to kind of look? We had a very big meeting. We thought it went well. We need to relax. Now. We need to relax a little bit. Oh my god! We need to get the queer out of our out of our system because we've been like a bunch of queers since seven o'clock this morning. So, do you think eating healthy is going to extend your life? All right. We did it. We did the fucking view today, basically. Yeah, just show us, show us your feeders. Let's go. Ma'am, can we see your bosoms? Uh, oh, come on. The, the boy is clapping. In my bra. I'm no. not taking my bra off. You don't have to take it off. Just flash real quick. No one's going to shoot the picture of it. You can see him in my bra. Okay, can we see that? All right, listen. No, here's the deal. <laughs> see that nice no, if you don't show the boobs, then uh, everyone has to leave. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> a little pressure. You're I'm using sorry. that peer pressure <laughs> thing. A little peer pressure What thing. kind of panties? Do you have a thong? No. <laughs> what, what do, you have? do you have big, awful ones? Free no. balling? Hipsters. Boy shorts? No. What are hipsters? You have two know. skateboarders around your vagina? <laughs> hipsters. I'm good. 
Flynn Walker. As I'm talking to her, I'm pinching my dick shaft. Wow. And I, and I wonder why I'm unpopular with the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with your looks. Oh What's that, Rich? <laughs> yeah, I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> Is that her boyfriend or husband? Neither. This is my friend. We already got through that. How old gal are you? I'm married, but not to her. We're just friends. Okay. Oh, you wow. Friend, okay. Are you guys friends with benefits? Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> Pardon? Do you you don't do none of that fucking... Cause sometimes Do I have a boyfriend? No, I don't. How old are you? <laughs> Pardon? Are I'll you? be 26 on the 25th. Why don't you have a boyfriend? You're kind of attractive. I don't know. <laughs> Just uh, as a, she I don't know. Nice right girl. now, I don't have one. <laughs> Were you ever married? with me too much. <laughs> what, do you, are you in love? Are you a wife? You're not in love with you. How many tattoos do you get, Megan? I have this one and I have one on my back. What do you have on your forearm? Look here. Tramp um, stamp. You got tramp stamp. Yes, the tramp stamp. Yeah. Yes, I love that. I heard that a couple of years ago. It was amazing. Can we take a look at the clam? <laughs> the clam. Wait, She's sleeping. <laughs> what, what, what is that on your form? Uh, they're carpenter nails, or crucifix. Jesus Christ. Maybe Jesus that's why Christ. You know, boyfriend. That's it's, right. It, it, it's hard to What's think that, that a girl's gonna put out when she has the Lord on her arm. Yeah. <laughs> and we just found out they use mason nails. They didn't use carpenter nails. Whatever. Oh Hold God. on. It's the 21st century. Wow. <laughs> no. Normally specific. Carpentry jokes are very good. Especially when it comes down to the nails. That's a very funny thing, the nail. Mason nails are great. You can you can nail them to brick. Can you? How do you know? Is that how you put your hats on? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the phone. Um, uh, Carolyn, Texas, what's up? Hey, guys. Are you feeling better this morning now? Yeah, I didn't um, sleep well last night because I was just thinking about... <laughs> This big interview with Mel Carnegie. <laughs> First time we saw him in six years. Are your nipples big or small? Are your nipples big? We're not going to get anything out of her, Jimmy. Um, <laughs> my nipples? I don't know. Do you shave Normal? everything? No. What, her nipples? Little? Landing strip. That's what you call it, right? <laughs> Is that it? Looks like, so a, personal. looks like a fiery <laughs> runway. What did I get myself into? So Sorry. you came up here. <laughs> I did. I know. We're just trying, to, just trying to be normal because we had a very tense day. Yeah. Hope he snapped it. Rich, poor Rich was very hurt. <laughs> Jimmy's oh, very I, I, fucking I don't horned up. <laughs> Rich, right now, see, this is why he couldn't be in studio and Mel was here. Because the way he wears his headphones, he has one on his ear, like I do. Oh, God. I, but, but I have them both on the top of my head. Voss is wearing them, like, crookedly. Like, there's like a six inch gap between the. Yeah. Between the, uh, the, the head and where the uh, top band. of the band should be. Well, I get an earache when I put it on this one. I don't care one. why you do it. Our audience gets an earache whenever you talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you, it's the way you look, look at me, Rich. I can't wear them either, but look at how I keep mine fitted to my See? head. Oh, like that. Yeah. Because it falls off me. It's on his neck. You just don't know what you do. You have a bigger back head than me. Yeah, it's where the brains are. <laughs> 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 That's true. Most of the fucking Doberman pincher head. <laughs> Little teeny walnut sized brain. Hey, Stegosaurus brain. <laughs> Let's go to Dave in Tennessee. Dave. Hey, guys. Hey. I just wanted to say, first of all, that was a great interview. And thank you that all three of you have houses to pay for now. <laughs> yeah, right. Why, well, you, you, were, you were scared we were going to say <clears throat> something dumb? Eh, you know, I think the OP of a few years ago might have handled that a little bit differently. But well, well Logan think. gave me the speech yesterday. He goes, I want to make this perfectly clear. Be Greg Hughes tomorrow, not OP. I'm like, I'm the same person. What are you talking about? <laughs> but I felt that I felt that I got to the bottom of the issue. You sure did, Jimmy. Mel, did you find the elevator ride satisfactory? <laughs> Ted, uh, what floor is your office on? God, was I like just worthless noise? <laughs> worthless questions. Let's go to Joe and Glendale. Joe. Hey, what's up, boys? Hey. Uh, first of all, I want to give kudos to Opie for just blasting out, are you here to give us our pink slips? I think that broke a lot of the ice. Yeah. He meant pink socks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, well, he gave us the pink sock back in the day, that's for sure. Uh, the, question, the question I have is, in a perfect world, if you had your druthers, would you rather still stay on in the mornings, move, or you like do anything for the company? Or are you going to be pretty steadfast? Well, you know, now, now we're going into what you're in a contract negotiation. No, I know. I, I, I am, uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm so ready to go back to afternoons. I'm so ready. Here's why I like mornings. I'm being, I could, we could continue in mornings. I'm not saying that's what we're going to do. But my God, what a life we had in afternoons. I love, I love, what a life we had. I like mornings, believe it or not, and I'll tell you why. 
because even though it fucks my nightlife up, I live like a human being, and I like the replays we get. If we go in the afternoons, we lose a lot of the replays. You like the life you lead? Like, like Meaning after this, I got to go to my lawyer's thing and close on the storage unit. All this shit I do, like real life living that I had to do with bank stuff, and just the little things that you do. Mm -hmm. When I'm working that, I'm up until 7 in the morning. I'm getting up at 2 and coming in at 3. But you can do that up until 3 o'clock in the I afternoon. That's not what I do, though. <clears throat> Wait, you need a lawyer to get a storage Thank unit? You. All right. That, the fact that... Oh, I, God. I, Here I, he this, goes. This is what I like. He's off will again. always find the, the important part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. Yes. Two Jews walk into a bar. They own it. Isn't one of them sober? <laughs> But no, I'm serious. Why would you need a lawyer to get a storage are. unit? Did they have Pilsner glasses? <laughs> <laughs> or were they the regular water glass for the beer? Yes. See, you guys exactly. How old is St. Pauli girl? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> is it a good question? I'm Ted the Rich Voss. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm Ted the Rabbit Tooth Jew. <laughs> That's right. I chew Nicorette gum and blow bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's continue uh, here. Let's I'm as dumb as a bag of me. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to Charlie. Phil. 141 Charlie. IQ. What's that? Yeah, I know. We you don't have a 141 IQ. We all saw the rock you animation. You don't have a 140. You don't. 141. We do 141. Shut, Shut up. Shut up. Four. We'll do it again. Shut up. I'll yeah, we will do it again. Charlie it. and Philly, what's up? What's up, Bubba Boy? Hey. Hey, Rich. How are you? What's going on? <laughs> 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 that is funny, Charlie. Merger went through. Does this mean we can have you guys are going to have Florence we're back in studio, man? They were some of the greatest shows. Yeah, I, I think we'll be able to do a lot of crossover stuff to help promote because we we'll want to promote our stuff on Sirius. We we'll want to promote uh, uh, Jimmy's stuff over here, of course. It I makes think sense. I think that's a yeah an obvious uh, thing to do. But I'll tell you right now uh, about Jim Brewer. There's a space. There's a there's a there's a space waiting for him in our fucking comedy show Saturday, man. How great would that be if fucking Brewer hit the stage for well, 15 yeah. minutes to say hi to some old, some old pals? God, is Brewer awesome. is Brewer uh, working today? I think our uh, fans should like uh, really put the pressure on him. How great would that be? We, and Brewer would kill. We love Brewer because there there was times that uh, we were going to do some things with Brewer over the last year or two, but it was it was uncomfortable because of the two different companies. But now there's no excuse. There is a spot waiting for him on Saturday if he wants it. In front of eight to ten thousand people in his hometown. I want to do the Corielli Brewer show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to go in studio and do that yep. show. We used to do it a lot, Bonnie and I. It was fun. It, I fun never got it, <laughs> yeah, you up. fucking traitor. <clears throat> no, I'm not a traitor. I'm glad that's yeah. coming out finally. Yeah, traitor. Yeah, no. I fucking called for permission. Well, yeah, <laughs> but that, that was just me being nice. I, we figured you would do the right thing in the end. I've done you the right thing for traitor. years. Man, I told man, can go fuck himself. Oh, ooh. I, I turned down <laughs> other people. Uh, we'll talk about it. I've turned down a lot. Who, yeah, who, who else? Who? Uh, you know yeah, what? Don't worry. Know. Martha Stewart. All I know is... Martha. The sports guys. You know, all I know is I'm a loyal guy. That's all I know. Are, Are you? you? Yeah. Are you really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you? Why would you need a lawyer to get storage, Ben? Because, it, it, believe me, it makes me sick to my stomach. It's uh, because it's considered deeded property here in New York. Deeded property. Oh. So you need a Jew lawyer to get in there and uh, negotiate yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, your deal Jew. for you. I didn't see you talking about the Jews when Mel was in like that. What? You're right, Voss. There are. I, I, they're just lawyers. They're the only lawyers? The lawyer. Yeah, the for lawyers? the most part, only the good ones. ones. You want you know, an Irish gotta, lawyer? Yeah, you don't want that. Next time you say, then say you're a good Jew lawyer. I just, it's, it goes hand in hand with really? just saying a Jew lawyer. Why does that sound derogatory? Well, yeah. are you a serious? Jewish, okay, a Jewish lawyer. No, but you say go get your Jew lawyer. That doesn't sound like it. It's a compliment. It's no, hard to they say. make great laws. It's like also get, get my Jew doctor. Go get your Jew lawyer. Would you say that about a black person? Uh, no, they're not Jewish unless it was Sammy. <laughs> no. Go get your it's, Jew one eyed entertainer. <laughs> get my African American. Oh, now it's African American. It, it, you know it's a negative right, black. thing. The no, guy's the thing on the top of your head again. You look ridiculous. Oh my God. I can't, can, I, Don't. Why can't you what? Jewish people understand that it's a compliment? It's it's a compliment to Ooh. your your uh, uh, intellect, your drive as a people. No, it's to a compliment. If you, the, say, the, if you say the, up to lawyer or doctor or something like that is amazing accomplishments. If you say 
most good lawyers are Jewish. Compliment. You say, Jew lawyer. Go, if you say, go get your Jew lawyer. Go get your Jew lawyer on me. It's, go get your shine box. Was that a compliment? <laughs> I said no. Huh? It's a compliment. <laughs> All right. If I said, go get my Italian lawyer. What's wrong with that? Because Guinea lawyer is the equivalent of what you're saying. No, people say a Jew. They don't say, uh, oh, this guy is a Jew. They don't say, that's not a bad word. Is that a bad word as far as Jewish people go? No, it's not. To use the word Jew. You say say that because it scares the person. I'm getting my Jew lawyer because you're you're thinking, oh, boy. It's scary because the Jews know what they're doing when it comes to lawyering. (laughs) Right. By the way, it's like being at an Aryan Brotherhood dinner. It's like, (laughs) you've never been to my house then (laughs) and see what a real one looks like. (laughs) Um, I got to go backwards because I I don't feel like getting the phone call later. Rich, I was kidding about your loyalty. You're loyal to the show because later on. Oh, he's going to call uh, now. Nah, you know, I really did turn <laughs> you know, a lot I just want to mention that I turned uh, down this show and this show and this show. And because me and that, Bonnie were going to go on. And, uh, Even the baby's bah, bah, turning bah, bah, things bah. down for loyalty. He's Rich is one of those guys, you get two voicemails, and you're like, oh, two people wanted to talk to me today. And then you realize that he had more to say, so he actually fucking called back. <laughs> And another thing, <laughs> just just so I can make my point. Uh, I, we tur- all know you're loyal to the show, Rich. The baby turns one jokes. tomorrow. One years old tomorrow. Wow, it's been a year already? Yep. Jesus. One Kid's beautiful, old. man. Thank you. No joke. It's creepy. Good morning, people. Oh, yeah, it's still morning. Also, uh, good morning to all the people listening to us at Sirius. Well, they're isn't listening. That, isn't that uh, the same company? Uh, yeah, but it's two kind Serious of separate companies, XM. sort of, still, because, like, you have two separate units. Until we start sharing program, then I would uh, acknowledge that we're kind of one big happy family. Mm-hmm. But I did get word yesterday uh, that uh, the bigwigs yeah. are uh, taking a little a little look-see. Should have played best of. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so uh, they're listening over there. Well, Hi. How our you old, doing? Our old boss uh, called call, yesterday. Call Jeremy. in. Remember Jeremy? Yeah. Jimmy, he called to say hi yesterday. He thinks I don't like him. Ah, uh, well. What? You did say some awful things about him. No, did I was you? awful. No, I, was just, <laughs> I was just mad because I thought he like he didn't he didn't help me out. With, but uh, but as far as like he think he really thinks I actively don't like him. Like that's not true. Look, let's face it. We said awful things about everybody. Sure. <laughs> we really did. We were in the heat of competition. In a very uh, competitive business, with uh, our our uh, futures hanging in the balance, so everyone said very yeah. nasty things about each other's company and the employees they're in. So, what are you going to do? Now we're uh, merged. We're one company, and uh, what and do you want from me? And we'll see what happens. And now you're uh, drinking champagne cocktails in the Sierra Mountains. I worked at NEW with his father. His father, but, uh... You know how many times I said to Mel Carmerson off mic yesterday? Yeah, you know it's entertainment. We're just trying to entertain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Because he called us out on a few things. I'm like, ah, Mel, you should know better than anyone. This is entertainment. We're just trying to entertain. And he, you know something, though? He does know. He gets it. The guy knows what this type of radio is all about. He gets it. To a point. He was uh, he just, uh, you know, he's a money guy. He sure. was a great guest, man. Honestly, it was fun. To, it, I mean, uh, let's be honest. We were all trying not to say the stupid wrong thing, but uh, <laughs> he was very engaging. And uh, it was almost like that's the most time I've ever spent with a boss. It has ever. been. It I've has never been. spent that much time with a guy who could uh, who could fire me immediately. Not even Elo. <laughs> I mean, we, we spent like brief periods of time, but never for 45 minutes on the air. 45 minutes like that on the air. Yeah, I mean... Uh, initially, what's his name? Who was the guy that was in charge of XM when we first got here? Hugh Panero. Hugh Panero. I mean, what? We didn't get t- two seconds with him, and and the second you open your mouth to say something, he'd start talking. His he uh, never wanted to listen to anything that was being said. That's one thing I noticed about him. Our our first meeting was awful with him. Yeah. He he. His opening line was. Uh, I'm not a fan of you guys, but I understand why it will work for XM yeah. Satellite Radio. I'm like, wow. Oh, thanks. Wow. Thanks. Thanks for that. And then Nate? I didn't hear. We we had one meeting with Nate. Nate uh, Davis, who's now uh, leaving the company as well. Yeah, we had one meeting with Nate. Yeah. Um, And that uh, I, I think that was a little strained, yeah. to tell you the truth, because I don't think we agreed on certain policies of certain content. Well, that was uh, allowed on our show and should be 
steered away from on our show. Well, the one meeting we had with him was right around the Imus controversy, yeah. and he openly said that he would have fired Imus as well, and I'm like, oof. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut right now and just... Uh, and just not wait for wait for Mel to take over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, pretty much it. At that point, it wasn't a bad thing that we knew a merger was going through, and, and Mel yeah. would be the boss because Mel absolutely wouldn't have fired Imus. I don't think he would. No fucking no. way he would have. Mm -mm. He just wouldn't have, unless the advertisers really started uh, completely bailing. Then, from a business standpoint, he would have said, "Wow, this isn't good business for me. That's why I got to get rid of him." Not because of what uh, Imus said. See, Mel no. doesn't give off CEO energy. Like he gives off, like he's a regular dude. Um, he's he's just he's a guy, uh, but he's a CEO. He doesn't give off that 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 like you can't connect with energy. Like most of those guys, you feel like you never live. Well, yeah, be a GM sitting in one of his meetings when he's asking about how much the station built. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> those those poor bastards. Yeah, we got to see fun Mel, not not I. I you know, I'm boss Mel or business Mel. We got to see that's that's as fun as he gets. Which was <laughs> yeah, yesterday. That's, that's it. Hey, look, I'm sure he wields a, a hammer when he has to. Oh, he, yeah, you don't run Viacom. And yep. he was refusing to have... I mentioned the Charlie Rose interview. Um, <laughs> yes, I remember that I question. Did. It was a fun moment. But in that interview, it was, they, Charlie Rose kind of pinned him because he was like, no, he's like, you never went out to like dinner with Sumner Redstone. He likes to things like, it's family. And right. Go out. And I was like, well, I was busy. You know, I couldn't have time. And Charlie Rose said, you didn't want to go out to dinner with him. He's like, no, I didn't. Like, he just refused to eat with Sumner Rems Redstone yeah. when he was the boss. Yep. And I love that, which means I have no shot at a dinner. I, was, I actually, <laughs> this is how pathetic I am. I had a closing yesterday on my storage unit, and I said to Ope, dude, he's coming in at 930. Will we be done by 12? There was a part of me that thought, Mel Mago, let's grab some lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Holy mackerel, are you delusional? Yes, I, I yeah. honestly God, thought he might have said, look, we're having an intercompany lunch. We'd love you to be a... Yeah, come and show up for lunch. Sounds like something I'd think. We've Oof. known him. We've known him off and on for ten years, and he once offered us uh, a bottle of water. Bottle of water in the uh, office. Yeah, that's in that's his, uh, that's as uh, social as he's his gonna, grand office. Gonna get with you. My goal with this new company is to dine with him once. Yeah, that'll happen. Even if, even if I just find out where he's eating and show up in the restaurant, <laughs> and, uh, give a quick nod, um, <laughs> like a creepy stalker.